best rivalry, I believe, in, in all of sports. Just about everybody in Alabama is on one side or the other. You've got to do it once to understand exactly what it's when like. When you play this game, there's nothing like it. Keeps it. Touchdown, Auburn. Matt Tiffin has won the ball game. This is his son, Lee Tiffin. Kick is good. Chris Davis, an answered prayer. Throw off church. Touchdown. Give the ball up and over. And here. Here's a good snap. It is not. It's caught on the run. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us the 84th edition of the Iron Bowl. And from Pat Dye Field and Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, it's the 15th-ranked Tigers against their arch nemesis from Tuscaloosa, the 5th-ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. They started this back at Lakeview Park in Birmingham in 1893. And so many of the games from that point were played at Legion Field in Birmingham. And then, 30 years ago, they call it the first time ever here at the Plains. They finally got a home game at Auburn. Stacy Danley ran for 135 yards. Reggie Slack threw it around the field. The defense came up big against number two Alabama. There was the upset for Pat Dye over Bill Curry. And with that, we wish you a happy holiday weekend, everybody. I'm Brad Nussler with Gary Danielson and partner. Since that time, 30 years ago, this hasn't exactly been a field of dreams for the Crimson Tide. <laughs> no, it hasn't. They usually come in rank one or two for the last nine years. They're number five, but that makes it just that much bigger. It does, because they've got a couple challenges here. Not only do they have to win this football game against a great Auburn defense, they also have to look good doing it. I mean, their team is built around offense, and they have to show that this thing will work and potentially win the national championship to get in. Well, you and I and Jamie and our crew always look forward to this game, but when we looked at the schedule back in July, we weren't expecting this quarterback match. No, we really weren't. There's never been anything like this kind of matchup in this big of a game. Mac Jones and Bo Nix. Two guys, the young Bo Nix came in as a true freshman. Look at their stats. The young freshman actually has more snaps than the third year player, Mac Jones. Max had a couple warm up games, but nothing like he's going to play today on the road against this great Auburn defense. Well, we've seen these guys a lot this year, and you look at the two teams, and they have two particular strengths, don't they? They do. You look at Alabama, their team is built on the perimeter. Their receivers are the stars of their team. 70% of their yards come in the passing game. Mac Jones can't play this game in second gear. He's got to rev up that Ferrari and use these <laughs> receivers in this football game. But on the other side, the stars for Auburn are their defensive linemen. Marlon Davidson and big Derek Brown. Those two guys have to demand the double teams up front for that defense to work. Stars in this game. They got to be stars. Hey, you can't have an Alabama Auburn game without using the word kick in there. Sometimes. No, no, whether it's punt, Bama punt, or the kick six, <laughs> it's got to be there. And this is an interesting matchup in this game. Jalen Waddell is leading the country in punt return yardage, and Auburn is last in defending it. Uh, that might not be good. That could be a problem. 25 seniors being honored here today on Senior Day, playing their final game at Pat Dye Field, including the aforementioned. Derek Brown, the All-American, with his little boy out there and his family. Marlon Davidson, part of that dynamic duo that we talked about. Will Hastings, who's had to come back from a couple of knee surgeries. Emotional day for him. And Prince Teo Wanogo made the longest trip from his native Nigeria to play on the Plains. 84th Iron Bowl is next. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by GMC.
Gillette. Chick-fil-A. And by Bud Light. This is the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The best game from the best conference. Yeah, that means Alabama and Auburn. And here come the hometown Tigers, eight and three. Their only losses to number two, number four, and number 10. That's the kind of schedule they've had this year. And from Tuscaloosa, Crimson Tide of Alabama, 10 and one. They're only set back to number two LSU. Third member on the field, Jamie Erdahl. Jamie. Oh, the Iron Bowl, Brad. If you grew up in this state, you are entrenched in its history and traditions. Well, you know what? Even if you didn't grow up here, if you have Alabama or Auburn football in your blood, you take it with you no matter where you are. Perfect example, Bo Nix. When his dad, Patrick, was done playing here at Auburn, he moved to the college coaching ranks. No matter where the Nix family was, they still rolled the trees after an Auburn win. This photo was in 2010 after the Iron Bowl, also known as the Canback. Bo told me his neighbors would see his siblings with toilet paper, think they were wreaking havoc on the neighborhood until they saw his mom was supervising the celebration. But this is Bo's Iron Bowl moment. He said it won't hit him until he takes the field for the final time before kickoff. But you have to remember, the dimensions are the same, the ball is the same, but he wants to take this moment and run with it, Brad. I would think the butterflies are about the size of the new War Eagle 8, Aurea, who made her maiden flight here to midfield before the game. Alabama leads by 10 in the series. It's perfect weather. If there's a more beautiful last day of November, I haven't seen it. Alabama won the toss and deferred. So Joseph Bulibus has it teed up. Noah Igbenogany and Matthew Hill wait deep. And Auburn will work from the 25-yard line. As we check the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with a guy that Jamie just spoke of, Bo Nix. His dad, Patrick. Played in the 90s here, and now this generation of Knicks leads his team out. And the rest of the offense for the Tigers, including some seniors up front on that offensive line that will lead the way to, they hope, a good ground game today that they're going to need. First down, Auburn from the 25. Empty backfield, Knicks. His first throw lobs it over the middle of Schwartz. Schwartz has tremendous speed. He lost the football. Big scramble at the sideline. I think Auburn got back on top of it. I think they did too. And one of the most things that Gus Malzahn talked about was getting the ball in the hands of his speedster, finding ways. The next thing you should talk about is keeping it yeah, in the hands. Exactly. Good thing Shedrick Jackson was in the neighborhood to recover the fumble, and Schwartz limps or hops off after one play. Wow. You lose your speed receiver on the first play of the game. Hope it isn't too bad. I hope so too. E.J. Williams joins the backfield. And now shift sides on first down at the 38. Knicks throws back shoulder. Got it complete. Seth Williams first down Auburn. Good start. It is two for two for your own quarterback. A matchup against Trayvon Diggs right there to the outside. I actually thought he had a big deep, and he might just let it go deep. Still went back shoulder and executed perfectly. 53rd catch for Seth Williams and out of the ground game to Williams. Anthony Jennings, part of the group there to make the tackle on the bottom. The Crimson Tide defensive lineup, you'll see. 
with Jennings and Lewis, those two edge rushers and a couple linebackers, some youth in that area. Jared Maiden, part of the secondary, he leads the way with four interceptions for the Crimson Tide defense. Keeper by Nix is going to run out and lose about three yards. That one never quite developed for him. Couldn't get to the outside. That's the basics of the Alabama defense right there. They feel that they're doing their job when they're playing their best defense is when they set those edges. It may be wide, but they do not let that speed guy get outside of them. And they didn't there either, so it's third down and long. And Whitlow in the backfield with Nix on third and ten. Nix has to scramble to his right and throw on the run. Was it caught? It was by Shedrick Jackson. I didn't think he had enough room over there. Amperty Jennings, number 33, put pressure on Bo, gets out of the pocket, and Jackson comes back. They're going to hurry it up and try to beat the replay. Did he have it? They they called it complete. Don't see anything to change it there, do you? He's got half a Pat Dye well, field in his face mask. Well, they called it incomplete. Was he out of bounds? His left foot, maybe. Well, well, he cradles the ball there. Yeah, I don't know if he was out of bounds when he caught that ball. But his toe was in bounds when Coming he first touched it. Pass. The previous play is under review. So I think what Gene is going to tell us is when he controls the ball, okay, he touches it there, but when he controls it, is he out of bounds? I don't see his toe. I thought it was up in the air. Gene Steratore is our rules official. Gene, what do you see? You know, in my opinion, guys, I think the, that he kind of sticks this ball. Now, we do lose it as he crumbles from the angle we just see, so we can't tell that he that the ball did th that there was any bobble there now that left foot in the back end right the left foot to me hits inbounds it appears to lift up in the air again and then unfortunately we don't see the football from the back end and then that foot hits out of bounds so at looking at this Gene, I mean there's possession there Gene quick question is there a difference yes. of whether he was called incomplete because it was a non-catch or if his toe was out of bounds in the replay? No, I don't think that would be any deciding factor at all. After just further the review, the stands. The pass is incomplete. So um, if, if it was ruled incomplete because of his toe or whether it was ruled incomplete because he didn't make the catch, <laughs> Which is it? We don't really and, know. Well, you know what, Gary? That to me, that's as an official. That's why the word "stands" means so much when right, the referee right. comes out. So what that referee is saying is based on the ruling on the field. I have nothing to overturn it. Thanks, Gene. Not sure I agree with fourth, that one, but it's this fourth is and fourth ten. down. Are they going for it? They're going to punt. Pooch punt by the quarterback. There it is. Will it stay out of the end zone? No. So Bonix tried to keep it in the field of play and couldn't. A little controversy here in the opening couple of minutes. Fans are not liking it. Gus Malzahn's not liking it. And yesterday when we visited with him, he did not like a call in the Georgia game. We were even confused about which one, but he didn't like this one. Nope. Gus Malzahn still not happy about that call before the break. Gene Steratore is still with us on a controversial catch, no catch. Yeah, the question again from us as we they wait on us, Gene, is if they called it a catch, but it was ruled incomplete because of his toe, can the replay official ask what the call was? It just wouldn't be something they would ask. But look, in this situation, this is a good job by replay. Because when we see this review, you do not see the football throughout the whole process of that catch. And I think it would be more controversial if they would have overturned it. All right, Gene. Thanks, thanks Gene. First down, Najee Harris blasts his way for a first down as we take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Starting with the guy making only his third start, first time on the road in a hostile environment. Mac Jones. 
Seven touchdowns, one interception. He played in the Arkansas game and then started last week against Western Carolina, but this is not Arkansas or Western Carolina defensively. This is Auburn. Second down in the yard. Najee Harris. First down run. And I thought he had the first down the first time he carried it. Definitely has it there. And the rest of the Alabama offense. And it starts a lot with Najee Harris now. He's got 10 rushing touchdowns, and he leads the country as a running back with seven more as a receiver here. Yeah, he is definitely the point of the spear. The second half of the season, his emergence has changed the Bama offense a bit. First down at the 33. Quick throw out to Jerry Judy. Judy made one guy miss, but Auburn is there at the 35. Owen Papo made the tackle. Along with Jeremiah Denson. The Auburn defensive lineup. We talked about the two All-Americans, Marlon Davidson and Derek Brown on that front. KJ Britt, the leading tackler and the middle linebacker. And look at the seniors in the secondary. That's what you love when you're a defensive coordinator like Kevin Steele. Because they're going to have their hands full today with this wide receiver core. But that tackle on a quick pass was a good sign for Auburn. Second down and eight. Devontae Smith in motion. Mac Jones looked that way and comes back to Najee Harris in the flat. And Harris is going to be knocked out of bounds before he can get the first down, bringing up third down at about two. Again, another tackle one on one by the secondary. Probably the best tackling secondary, at least in the SEC, of have seen this year. And I think, as Brad told you, the fact that they're veterans and seen so much really allows them to make those plays. First third down and short. Alabama good on third down this year. Third in the country at 54%. Two tight ends and now it's a direct snap. I, does Auburn have 12 men on the field or is it a delay of game? Well, there's a flag either way. Labor substitution, defense, 12 players in the formation. Enforcement of a five-yard penalty will result in a first down. Yeah, I was trying to, you, you know, when I do this, I try to go four, three, four, and I'm looking at all these guys, and I'm going, wait a second, are they in a four, four, four? Or what the heck is going on here? Too many fours. Yes. First down by penalty. At the 46-yard line for the time. On a counter, Najee Harris. Big run and took out the would-be tackler, Igbenogany, at the end of that one. Well, this offensive line for Alabama, this time it's leather with number 70, gets the edge blocked, and Najee Harris turns it into that uh, off-tackle one. Watch number 70 right here. Opens it up. Whoa. That's about as big a hole as you can get. And remember, we're talking about what most people consider the best defensive line in college football. Already 30 yards for Najee Harris on the ground. First down at the 37. Jones off play action. Plenty of time. Fires complete. On the run is Henry Ruggs. Ruggs down the sideline. Touchdown, Alabama. There is a flag. Seven-yard touchdown with a holding. So last time it was Leatherward against number 91 Nick Coe. He got the block. Same matchup in the pass offense this time. That's the holding call. He's got his hand out there. As he turns the corner, it looks like Coe kind of forced the call from the official. Could he have got there one step earlier? You got to be careful when you're on that edge. You got that center judge right behind you watching you play. Nick Coe, who has not made the impact on the Auburn defense that a lot of people had hoped for, and he made an impact there by getting the flag. He was preseason All-SEC. Najee Harris busts off the right side. Harris inside the 40 and a hurdle. And it's, another first down. We've seen that before. All the way back to our first game against South Carolina on a, a screen pass. This time he gets the edge again. Great blocking at the point of attack. That time it was Major Tennyson, number 88. Watch him leap right over number 20, that time Denson. 
So 23 yards to the 24-yard line for Najee Harris, who's got a strong opening drive going here. Two tight ends again. Najee Harris will flush out of the backfield. On a first down for Mac Jones to throw. Going to go deep to the corner. Got Devontae Smith. That's broken up by Edmund The ball was slightly underthrown, and that's the opportunity for Igman to come back and make the play. You'll see Devontae Smith beats him easy, and he has to climb back into the defender to try to make the play. And number four, Igman is able to get in there, play the body, turn around. That's some good defense right there. Underthrown ball. Allowed him to make the play. There's our pylon cam look at Igbenogany, the junior, the only junior in that secondary. Mac Jones looking for a flag. Doesn't get it. Goes back to the ground to Harris. And this time he's stuffed for a yard loss. Derek Brown and company up front. Oh, with, you see Najee Harris already with 50 yards rushing plus already in the first. He's having a second half of the season very similar to the way Derrick Henry did back in 2015 in his Heisman year. He's become so dependable, as I call the point of the spear, has made the other receivers so much more dangerous, especially now with a backup quarterback. Last time they had a third down, they got a first down by penalty. They're going to have to earn this one. It's third down and 11. Jones throws and it batted down at the line of scrimmage. Big Cat Bryant or Marlon Davidson, one of those big cats up yeah. front, knocked it down. <laughs> you got it. Big Cat or Big Cats. It was number one this time. They got it playing left defense and then over here to the right side of the offense. Jumps up and swats it down. Derek Brown has already demanded double teams in this game, but this time Deontay Brown's got him one on one and got a lot of them one on one on that one. Joseph Bullibus to try a 43-yard field goal. Kicking has always been a little bit of an issue for Alabama over the years. Trying to put the tie on the board, and he's dead center with that one. He's only had his only attempt over 40 was against Tennessee, and he missed it. He made that one. Kicking in the game. Tide has to settle for three out in front here on the road. Adam Zucker in New York with this Papa John's update. Number four, Georgia. No trouble scoring on Georgia Tech today. Jake Fromm to George Pickens for one of his four touchdown passes in a 52-7 win. But a few minutes later, Pickens gets ejected for trading punches with Trey Swilling. By rule, he'll be suspended for the first half of the SEC championship game. The Dogs also lost DeAndre Swift to injury in this game as we go back to the Iron Bowl. Going to be out of skill position players by the time we get to Mercedes-Benz Stadium next week. As Lawrence Cager's out with an ankle, DeAndre Swift, they don't know the extent of his injury, and Pickens out the first half, as I've just said, of the SEC championship game. That doesn't yeah. help Jake Fromm's and, and, cause. And hard to guess with those three guys which one's more important now. Yeah. Because of the first two, Pickens is important, but they got to have Swift, in my mind. Pickens has had some problems controlling his emotions at times this year, and that was really costly. This kick is returnable. From the seven yard line, Noah Ibnagano. And he gets out around the 28, maybe the 29-yard line for Auburn to start offensively there. Streamy CBS uh, Sports HQ, the complete free and always on Sports Network for nonstop highlights, breaking news, and expert picks. Download the CBS Sports app on your phone or connected TV to watch today. Gary will be along with the HQ gang following our Iron Bowl. Alabama leads it. After a 52-yard drive and 10 plays, most of it was Najee Harris and Bullibus capped it with the 43-yard field goal. Here's an end around of Matthew Hill. Ooh, man, did he get stuck by Xavier McKinney at the end of that one? And I wonder if that would have been Anthony Schwartz if he was healthy enough. I'm looking down there. He's still jogging on the sideline. Jamie says he is going to come back, they think. So he's, that's still, he's still testing it out, though. He doesn't even have his helmet on yet. He actually tweaked that knee in last week's game, so it's a re-aggravation issue, and he's trying to warm it back up. All right, Jamie, thanks. Bonitz, a lot of time, still has to scramble the throw. It's incomplete intended for Seth Williams. And Trayvon Diggs was in coverage, and it brings up third down. I was watching Seth Williams. I didn't even know if he knew he was in the play this time. Watch him come out here and just kind of jog, and then he just stops. He never even looks around for the quarterback till right at the end. 
and then he looks back. I don't know if he thought it was a run play or he was a decoy or whatever, but you know, when you have one of your key receivers not even looking back for the ball, it's not good. That's not good. It's, he is Bonick's leading receiver. Third down eight. Pressure coming from behind again. Mix goes right, goes deep. Man there, incomplete. Shedrick Jackson. Who was involved in that controversial catch? No catch. Yeah, was the intended receiver? And Ness again. Anthony Jennings, number 33, a guy who, along with Terrell Lewis, number 24, the edge rushers have to make a difference. And so far, on two plays in this game, number 33 Jennings has made a difference coming off the edge. So a punting situation for Auburn. Aaron Sipos to punts. That's seven punts a year ago in this game. They would prefer that they don't have that many punts this year. Jalen Waddles back deep. Remember what we said about him. Tops in the country in punt returns. Perfect and punt. That is keeping it away from him at the 15 yard line. Actually, they put it at the 17. Nonetheless, kept it out of the hands of the dangerous Waddle. 3 0 Alabama. Obviously, no Tua Tagovailo in this game, but Jamie caught up with him before the game. Tua, we hate to have to ask you this, but how are you feeling after your surgery? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling good. I mean, it's a lot better than it was last week, um, you know. But I can't stress enough, you know, how appreciative me and my family are for the amount of love and support that we've been getting from, um, you know, the fans and just, you know, people worldwide. Um, you know, I also want to want to thank the doctors, you know. I mean, they've, they've done a tremendous job in helping me. I'm on my road to recovery, so um, at this point, I mean, I wish I could play today. Speaking of those doctors, what have they told you about your prognosis moving forward? Yeah, well, um, it's no weight bearing for about six weeks, um, you know, and that's that's kind of all they told me. I mean, they don't want to they don't want to tell me anything else because then you know I'm gonna start thinking things. So it's no weight bearing for six weeks and. Whatever they, they got me doing after, you know, the six-week mark, then, you know, that's what, that's what I'll be doing. So no Tua, but Mac Jones in there in the lineup and getting some help from Najee Harris. And back to Jamie. And how have you been helping Mac Jones prepare for his first Iron Bowl? Yeah, well, you know, I think the preparation started way before, you know, I got injured. Um, you know, I think Mac's just been... A person who's been watching, you know, as me and Jalen had the opportunity to kind of, um, you know, compete with one another when Jalen was a starter, then when I was a starter, um, you know, he'd come and ask questions to probably both of us, you know, and, you know, I think this is just uh, an opportunity for Mac to go out against a really, really good defense, a good Auburn team, and uh, show what he's capable of doing with our offense. Tua, thank you. Thank you, guys. And part of that great defense that Tua was talking about is Daniel Thomas, who just made a great open field tackle on Henry Ruggs out in the flat to force a third down at 10. Yes. And thank you, Tua. Uh, Tua, and uh, continue luck in your rehab. 100%. We miss you. And he makes everybody happy around him. Doesn't even yeah. Nick was saying that. We'll tell that story yes. a little bit later. Right now, his understudy is listening to this crowd of 87,000 and hoping to convert a third and 10. Pressure coming. He's going to try to run for it. And he got there, but he took a lick Man. from Daniel Thomas at the end of it. And Derek Brown was back there, too. And a little whiffing going on between Derek Brown and the Alabama quarterback. But he got the first down. Derek Brown told us on Friday, he said, boy, would I ever like to turn around and hit one of those little guys once, right? <laughs> Thomas gets the hit, and Brown Ooh, is right there. That's a lot of hit. That is a Mac Jones sandwich right there. You know, just thinking back to 2017 in this game, Auburn's last win in this game here, Mac Jones was actually the scout team quarterback. He was all week, Jared Stidham, in this game. Right. And now, two years later, he's the starter. First down after the 11 yard pickup by Jones. He's going to get dropped this time, though, on the blitz from the secondary. Smoke Monday just smoked him for a loss of about. Seven. And he timed this one up perfectly. Backup safety. Sophomore, he kind of sneaks up right at the end and hits it on the run. 
couldn't get the guard out on him at all. I think Evan Neal, number 73, just couldn't get to him. He was responsible, but because he timed it up so well, he missed it. I was going to say, it was timed so well, it almost looked like he was offside. It, it was perfect. And he lost eight out of it. Second and 18. Screen pass, Najee Harris. Trying to spin away, but he can't get away from the Auburn defense. So just as a note here, they're number one in the country for throwing the most passes at or behind the line of scrimmage right now is Mac Jones. For any quarterback that's thrown more than 50% of his passes, one out of every three passes is coming behind the line of scrimmage. I don't know if playing this Auburn defense in second gear is yep. going to be good enough. Yep. Going to have to throw it down the seam a little bit in the middle of the field sometime. Might be right here. Third down at 15. Oops. Going to be third down at 20. Yeah, and this might be a spot where you just kind of... All-star for offense number 74. Five-yard two. This might be the time run the draw play and not let Mac Jones make a big mistake right here. Empty backfield on third down and 20. All the big play wide receivers for Alabama are out there, but they've been kept in check here so far in the first 11 minutes. Jones has all day crossing route to Najee Harris. Going to have to beat a couple defenders and won't. And it's punting time. Owen Papo, the freshman linebacker, stayed with him to make the tackle. So Alabama's going to have to punt for the first time. Can this Auburn defense force the Alabama offense to do something they don't want to do? And what they don't want to do right now is throw the ball down the field. That's right. Ty Pirine to punt. Christian Tut. Actually one of the better punt returners in the country as well. Not number one like Waddle, but a very good one in the top five. He's on the other end. Looking up in the sun. He'll take it at the 31. Broke one tackle. And another. Tuck across midfield. Christian Tuck all the way to the 32-yard line. Hurt at the end of the run back, but it was a beauty. Hopefully not hurt too bad. I think it was Anthony Jennings again making the big play on the punt return. Starters on the field. He's right here on the right side, and it comes back into him. Daniel Thomas gets a block, cut back, and watch number 33 save the day. And again, the concern, as you see the hit by Jennings right there, that upended Tut after a 37-yard punt return. They continue to look at him, and his teammates gather around. Tomorrow, NFL doubleheader action begins with most of you seeing the Browns and the Steelers with the winners staying in the hunt for the AFC wild card, followed by the Chiefs and the Raiders in a key AFC West matchup. Starts with the NFL today with JB and the guys. Noon Eastern on CBS. Christian Tut ran off the field under his own power. That's good to see. He got a big ovation from the crowd after a 37 yard punt return. We talked about what the kicking game and special teams might be. Well, he made the first big play of the day so far for Auburn. And it has him set up shot at the Alabama 32-yard line. Bobby Whitlow got the corner. Whitlow prancing down the sideline of the 17. And another Auburn first down. Well, that time Jack Driscoll, the right tackle, was able to pin the edge. Remember when we talk about that Alabama wants to keep it inside? He handles Terrell Lewis. He might have handled them a little too much, but he got away with it again. <laughs> the officials are letting them play. Pick up down to the 17-yard line of 15 for Whitlow. Going right back to him. Now he goes left side. Whitlow. Trying to break tackles. Picked up about three, and now a flag flies in late. They never do get him down, but was there maybe a face mask in there someplace? I think Jared Maiden had the initial hit on the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense in the 45. Half the difference to the goal, automatic face mask. 
Going to be on Shane Lee. At least that's who it was called on, and it is right. It was 35. I believe it was, too. Yeah. Right at the end of it, just before it ended, Shane Lee came in late and got the late fast pass. So Auburn threatening here with 220 remaining in the first quarter. Good news on this drive, though. Auburn being able to help the quarterback with the running game. First and goal at the seven. Nix keeps it, scores, standing up, touchdown, Auburn. Obviously, again, Alabama loses contain. Everybody plays the zone key for the quarterback, but watch the inside backer get caught inside on the fake. Two players go inside, quarterback goes outside. How easy. Seventh touchdown rushing for Bo Nix has given Auburn the lead. Modern football with a running quarterback, someone always is responsible for the quarterback. Anders Carlson for the point after. And a whistle before the kick. Prior the snap, delay, offense, five yard penalty, replay the try. Gonna make it a little deeper for Carlson. As Auburn's kickers, including his brother who kicked here before him, made 304 extra points before he missed one earlier this year. So they're gonna back it up and he'll try it again. Out of a Sage Ledbetter hold. As you look into the sun with Anders Carlson along with us, try to make it 7 3. Auburn, and he does. Remember, they didn't have to go far, courtesy of Christian Tut, who ripped off a 37 yard punt return. That set him up at the 32, and it only took three plays from that point on to Bo Nix to put Auburn in front. 7 3 Tigers. Want more stats? Hey Siri, who leads college football in receiving touchdowns? So far today, no receiving touchdowns for that talented group of wide receivers for Alabama. They'll get a chance here after the kickoff to go back to work at the 25 with Mac Jones and company. And in the Iron Bowl, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> no, there it is. If you don't want to get hit, you might want to stay home. This is just some of the action from the first 13 minutes of the first quarter. The intensity in this game and what makes this rivalry so big is matches the intensity the other 364 That's days right. in yeah. this area. They talk about it for the other 364. It's not just about this three right. and a half hours every year. You know, the other big games, you know, Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, Oklahoma, they kind of move on to Red Wings or Dallas Cowboys. These they guys don't, move, don't get over They it, don't no. move on from this. <laughs> there is no moving on in the state of Alabama. Is Alabama going to loosen up this defense? Right now, Mac Jones is five out of seven, but for only eight yards passing. He's going to throw short again, but it's to Devontae Smith, who got it out to the 30, as we check in with Jamie. Well, while, while Auburn was optimistic, they continue to work on, work on Anthony Schwartz's right knee, but he is headed into the locker room after several doctors checked him out. All right, Jamie, thanks. That takes away a big-time speed guy for the Auburn offense. When we talk about Alabama's profile, what they are. They're third in the nation in 20-plus plays. 81, 66 of them through the air. Second down and four, Najee Harris straight up the middle. And again, a first down run by Najee Harris. Yeah. Didn't know Mac Jones coming in. It's Michael McCorkle Jones. That's where the Mac comes from. Had offers from a lot of places. His family, big into tennis, played both college and pro. His dad did. And his uh, team calls him Joker. Nothing to joke around about when your first start is on the road at Jordan Harris Stadium. This is a tough matchup yeah. for any quarterback. First down, Devontae Smith in motion. They're going to throw it out to him in the flat. Looking for a block. Flag is down. He's going to have a holding call, I think, on Jalen Waddle. At least that's where the penalty marker was thrown. 
came out really early. I'm wondering if it was misalignment or somebody lined up offsides as well. I don't. No, you're right. Yes. Five yard penalty. Three play first down. Yeah, I think the press coverage to the inside of the slot actually lined up offsides. That's a little too pressing. Yes. Remember, the inside of the slot is backed up a yard, and he's right on that line there. I think that's who got called. So first down at five at the 41 yard line. Each team with three penalties here early. Play action for Jones steps up pressure in the pocket got back to the line of scrimmage but that's about it. Marlon Davidson was coming around the corner. <laughs> Big Marlon. Yep. Well what's happened to Derek Brown. Watch the game plan. Demands the double team. We said great players demand it, and he got the tackle and the guard on the play. A little help from Willis and Deontay Brown. That's a tough matchup even for the All-American Derek Brown. But he's doing his job eating up two blockers. Right. Somebody else has to do it now. Second down and four. Kendall Randolph, the big tight end, is in there. Najee Harris is into the secondary. Another big run for Najee here in the final seconds of the first quarter. Well, when we mentioned Derrick Henry, remember in the 2015 game, he had 46 carries for 271 yards in this game. Winning the rushing game in this game has meant a lot. Puts Najee Harris over 1,000 with a 14-yard gallop. Puts us to the end of the first quarter. Auburn at home leading 7 to 3. We'll return to Auburn and Jordan Harris Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We're back to start the second quarter at Auburn. The Tigers lead 7-3 and a first down at the 44-yard line. Here's double reverse. Henry Ruggs trying to get to the corner, and he's going to get collared and run out of bounds after only about a three-yard gain. Javaris Davis, one of those seniors in the secondary, makes the tackle. Again, the senior, the veteran, making a play. When Alabama's dialing up a play, a big play, and you only get three or four yards, that's a win for the defense. The defense has kept that bonded wide receiver core of Alabama in check through yeah, the quarter. I was really expecting a play action deep ball there. Second down and five. Devontae Smith in motion. Sets up in the slot on the right. Quick slant is incomplete, intended for Devontae Smith. And Gary and I back in the booth for those of you in the upper Midwest or Northeast under a blanket of snow and ice. I apologize. We don't have our coats on. It's beautiful here. They haven't asked Mac Jones to do all that much no, today. But that play right there was the first RPO of the yeah. game. He pulled it, did not hit the slant. Nobody's better at hitting the slant than Tua. Yeah. So that's the plays when this offense was really dynamic. Tua would hit that type of play. He's missed two in my mind. He had a touchdown throw, he underthrow, and then that one could have been completed. Mack looking left, goes down the middle. That's going to be short of the first down to Jerry Judy. And the hit put on by Jeremiah Dinson. Yeah, and you can see this Auburn defense. They played a lot of football, and they're matching up. They know these receivers are good, but they don't believe with the combination of the pass rush up front and the inexperience at quarterback that they're going to allow Mac Jones to set in the pocket and throw the ball down the field. Fourth down and one. Slade Bolden in there to take the direct snap. He'll keep it. He'll get the first down. Well done. In there for one play, did what he was supposed to do, pick up the first down. He saw him one time before, and he didn't make it. Come in with it again, controlling the line of scrimmage, put an extra offensive lineman in the in the game that time. Number 84, Chris Owens, plays center, and number three, tight end, comes in on the edge for like an extra tackle offensive lineman in the game and made the play. So Bolden out, obviously, Mac Jones back in. In the gun on first down. Just outside the 32 of Auburn. There's a little pitch to Najee Harris. Najee had to kind of wait on the pitch. 
He does cut back and get some positive yardage out of it, though. He did. He had Marlon Davidson chasing him over there. It was like the old Y.A. Tittle quick pitch. Yeah. Time. Right. Everybody was just spinning out there. This is kind of a knuckleball, and it kind of gets caught in the can't get to the edge because he had to kind of stop and catch the ball. Look at Mark. Look at Marlon Davidson running after that guy. Wow. Marlon Davidson's a really fun guy to he hang sure out with is. if you're not an opposing running back or quarterback. If you don't have the football, yes. <laughs> Here's a play action. Going to throw out to Jerry Judy. Judy's got the first down inside the 20. That was a great decision that time by Mac Jones. That play was set up to go the ball deep. Covered well by the Auburn secondary. Judy is really a decoy to the outside like a quick screen. He wants to go deep. Nothing there. Takes the easy throw and the positive yards. Jones looks to the sideline. There's a quarterback comparison so far. Only 30 yards on those eight right. completions. Making decisions like that will give you more opportunities to throw from your offensive coordinator. There. Brian Robinson in the backfield with Jones here. And he'll get the carry for a couple. As Tyrone Truesdale, who's kind of the unheralded guy on the front wall for Armour, made the tackle. Just under 12 to go in the first half. This drive, seven runs, four passes as Anthony Schwartz continues, as Jamie told us, to try to warm up that leg and hopes to return to the Auburn offense. Second and seven in the red zone at the Auburn 16. Jalen Waddle in motion will set up in the backfield. Jones floats it out to Robinson, made a nice catch, diving. Close to the first down, he's about a yard and a half short. Short passes have to be precise. The ball is not in the air long enough for the receiver to adjust. When you hit him on the run like that on those swing passes, they gain yards. When you have to turn around and catch him, they don't work. Perfect throw. Robinson out after that catch. Najee Harris back in. Third down and one. Harris got it by a couple yards. It'll be first and goal. Smoke Monday tripped him up. Alabama's red zone offense this year. As you take a look, 37 touchdowns when they get down up to 54 trips in. And they would love one here to take a 10-7 lead. This is like a uh, Greg, Greg McElroy type drive, not a Tua type drive. 13 plays, control the clock, make first downs. Two are looking on. Mac Jones under center. The give is to Najee Harris on a counter, and he will dive in for the touchdown, Alabama. Good blocking by the two tight ends, and Najee Harris does what Najee Harris does. Rushing touchdown, number 11. And he runs right to the strength of that offense. Off the right side, Willis and Brown. Oh, Willis gets a great block. Just stones his man at the line of scrimmage. Throws him to the ground for that play. Bulbas in for the point after. Up and good. Impressive looking drive. Najee Harris. 18th time he's been in the end zone this year. 11 times on the ground, this time from six yards out, and the tide on the road back in front. Derek Brown, the All-America defensive tackle, just now walking off the field, was injured on the extra point. It was. He's right here. He leaps up on the play and comes down awkwardly. Trying to get a hand on the extra point, and then there's the landing, which yes. was not a good one. Right there, see, yeah, you can see him slip in his left leg. Right leg gets kind of twisted there, and it's, it grabs his right calf right away. He did walk off on his own, though. And he is headed to the Auburn medical tent. Meanwhile, Alabama will have a 75-yard drive and 14 plays to take the lead. Bulbous kick. Fair catch taken by Big Benogany. 
back inside the five. Ness, one more look at this touchdown. Jedrick Willis against Marlon Davidson matched up right here. These two guys, okay? Mana, mana against man. Watch this. <laughs> Willis Woo. throws him down and then falls on him. That is man-to-man -man combat. And Najee goes airborne for the touchdown to cap it. Roger McCreary grabbing air. <laughs> yeah, there's the big guy. First down at the 25. Play action. Nick's rolls, wants to throw back. Almost had it picked off. He was guessing. Anthony Jennings, and he's down. Yep. Jennings, who's been basically all over the football field making plays in the pass rush on special teams and now reading this throwback pass. And man on the line of scrimmage, he sees it, he falls back into it at the last second, and wow. Mike Horton let him have it. Yes, and, and a good thing he hit him just as he was touching the ball. It could have been intercepted. So Jennings down. A lot of star players have been on their back here in the first half. Adam Zucker with the Heisman Watch, presented by Nissan J.K. Dobbins, finding the end zone a career high four times, going for a career high 211 yards in number one Ohio State's dominant win over Michigan, their eighth straight in the rivalry. Clemson running back Travis Etienne setting an ACC career record for rushing touchdowns in Clemson's win over South Carolina. And LSU and Joe Burrow at home against AM tonight as we go back to the Iron Bowl. All right, Adam, thanks. Number five has not been a good jersey no. to wear today no. if you're an Auburn Tiger. Anthony Schwartz was shaken up the first time he touched the ball. Derek Brown is out of the tent now but was injured on that extra point, so the two number fives having a rough day. Besides the punt return, the Alabama team is off to a good start. Ten first downs already in this game. Bo Nix fakes the throw one way, rolls the other way, and throws it on the ground as we check in with Jamie on Derek. Yeah, Derek Brown out of the tent. Looks to be in some pain still. All I could see is they brought a lot of things in to keep someone hydrated. That's all I could say. So maybe hopefully just a cramp issue for Derek Brown. Well, that would be great news. Yes. And Anthony Jennings, by the way, is back in for Alabama. They were checking on him before we went to the last break. And if you were thinking about your, that last play, if you're an Auburn fan, what happened? Raekwon Davis, number 99, read the screen pass, and there was nowhere to go with the football on that play. So wisely threw it in the dirt. Yeah, nine, so 33 reads the screen, and then 99 reads the That's screen. That's right. Good defense. Third down at 10. Here comes a blitz. Nitz throws, knocked away by Patrick Sertan with a flag. Yep, they're going to call him. He put one hand on the shoulder and he reached up with the other hand. Seth Williams was the intended receiver. Two versus 18, watch him put one hand up, kind of boost himself up, and then with his left hand, knock the ball away. It's a good way to get a little extra elevation. Yep. A little couple inches. Pass interference, defense number two. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Do you really like the call, though? You know, that matchup, Seth Williams on a 50-50 ball, considering how difficult it is for you to pass block against this Alabama defense, the screens haven't been working, trouble running the ball except for that one little drive they had, get something to the outside one-on-one. -on -one. Here's a handoff to Whitlow. Nice cut. Got the first down, I think, with forward progress. We'll wait and see. And again, Booby says, you're not going to tackle me. I'm still standing up. Well, that time, this is the definition of how to run the pull and kick out right here. Mike Horton, number 64. Watch him pull out. Right tackle, Jack Driscoll fits on the linebacker. Perfect execution. Now a little tempo by Auburn, but that tempo just got stopped. By Raekwon Davis. Part of what Auburn does to try to confuse the opposing defense is yeah. go to a little bit of a hurry up, and they do it again here. Right at midfield, second down and 11. Nix throws to the outside and complete intended for Williams again, and Trayvon Diggs was covering. So as many plays as Jennings has made, so far off the other side, and I thought these two edge rushers, when we talked to Gus Miles and he said they both, both remind him of the Florida matchup when they had those two guys all coming off the edge. So far, Lewis, number 24, has not been able to do what 33 has been in the game. Those two guys have to be the rushers in this passing game. 
Third and long again from midfield. Knicks over the middle. Nice catch by Whitlow, and he got there. First down. Boy, and he just handles the edge. Look at. Here's the guy that has to cover Whitlow. He fakes it, gets inside of him. That's beat right there. When your running back gets inside, and now Whitlow, who had arthroscopic surgery early in the year and is right. finally said to be healthy, that's a scary situation. Had knee surgery October 8th and then came back against LSU and played a couple snaps in the Wildcat. Makes a really nice catch and first down there, but they're checking on him right now. Every family has a little drama. This one comes with laughs, too. Spend some time with the Cooper family and a new young Sheldon this Thursday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. The Whitlow family probably kind of holding their breath after Booby was injured on that uh, last catch and run for a first down. And again, you can see the look on his face. Yeah, when you've had an injury like that, first it scares you, and then you just hope, like, well, I hope this is just a little tweak here. Right. He did get the first down at the 38 yard line and Sean Shivers comes in in his stead in the backfield but is actually out in the slot as a receiver. Alabama has been in their nickel defense almost a whole football game. Gene Carter number five has been as the nickel back. He's lined up right there. They bake the jet sweep. Bo Nix is going to take off on his own. He got around the middle linebacker and then some run out of bounds by Lee but he's got a first down. All year I've been talking about the Auburn offense, whether it would work without a running quarterback, yep. right? And Gus looked at us Friday and said, he's running this game. It's the last game. Exactly. <laughs> I don't have to save him for anything. Pick because... up a 14. Down to the Alabama 24. DJ Williams in the backfield now. The three receivers are the top. And they'll give it to Williams. And he's dragged down for a loss by there, Christian boy. Barmore. Yes. Well, let's test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question. If Bo doesn't snap the ball before I get the question out, at least. Who are the only two true freshman quarterbacks to defeat Alabama under Nick Saban? This is a guy that's trying to do it. The freshman, Bo Nix. Not many guys, whatever year, beat Nick Saban who's 36 and two in the last 38 conference games. And one of those losses was two years ago right here. Knicks got to loft it to the corner. And he got it to the goal line intended for Seth Williams. It, but was, it was smart though. He had an unblocked rusher that time. Christian Harris, number eight, coming right up the middle. He had to just kind of pick a spot and let it go. Watch Harris come in unblocked, untouched. So he just got to go get rid of it. Let it go. Throw a pop up. Maybe my guy can get down there. At least I avoid the sack. He put it right to the pylon of the goal line, but Matthews, or uh, Williams rather, couldn't quite get there. Third down at 12. Four of 11 for Bonex so far. And going to take a timeout, Auburn. With 7.48 remaining in the half. We'll have a chance to come over and talk to Gus Malzahn. 87,000 plus with us here at Jordan Hare Stadium today on a beautiful day in Auburn, Alabama. I'm Adam Zucker coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. We'll get you caught up on all the other action, including Kentucky winning the Governor's Cup behind Lynn Bowden. Four rushing touchdowns, part of his 284 yards on the ground against Louisville in a 45-13 win. How good has he been? And out, of, out of position at quarterback. There's much more to the puzzle on the critically acclaimed new series, Evil, all new Thursday at 10, 9 Central on CBS. A couple things to think about here with this call for Gus Miles on. Anders Carlson is 9 for 9 inside the 40, but only 4 for 11 outside the 40 on the field goal. And I think back to that Florida game when he was a little too aggressive. He got one picked off in the end zone. He said, yeah, but he had the check down. Next time, he'll hit the check down. Let's see if it works. Third down and 13. Nicks gives it off. They play conservatively on the ground. And Raekwon Davis makes the tackle of D.J. Williams. 
And so Anders Carlson and company will be taking the field. Yeah, because all, but we've seen him, what, twice, three times? And I said, Coach, that's the one call I didn't like. <laughs> he, he didn't like I said it, but he goes, next time we'll do something better. Well, these last three games for Anders have been kind of up and down and all around. The 13 out of 20 on the year. It's a 43-yard field goal attempt to try to tie the game up. Ledbetter to hold. Carlson's kick is a beauty. Five for 12 outside 40. He'll take that one. Yes, he will. 7-0-4 remaining first half. Dead even in Auburn. Next Saturday at 1.30 Eastern, Conference USA title is on the line as the top two teams go head-to-head -head in this year's championship. Only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. 7.04 remaining in the half here as Auburn capped a 50-yard drive in 11 plays. A little over three minutes to get the Carlson field goal to tie it up at 10. And now his kickoff will go a yard deep to Jalen Waddle. Waddle brings it out, trying to spin away, trying to get to the other edge. And he did with the speed somehow. Goes out of bounds at the 25. That's where they would have started anyway, but uh, a flag down. Christian Tut was trying to do what the coach tells him. Keep him inside. Keep him inside. He still got outside. That's him. right. He's like, Coach, you don't know how fast this dude is. Exactly. Watch to the top of the screen. Number six will be there. Jerry return, blocking the back. Receiving team number 20. Ten-yard penalty from spot of the foul. First down. And so now they will wish they would have fair caught that. Yes. Jalen Weil is... Uh, when he gets into the open field, he's tough to find an angle on. Sure is. So that puts Mac Jones in the offense in a little bit of a hole here. Yeah, see if we can see number six to the outside. He's trying to play him and then just gets out ran. The touch going, you know, I thought I was pretty fast. Yes. Fifth Alabama penalty. No, As the no, crowd fired up. And Ness, no number three or number five on the field for Auburn here. Davidson or Brown. Najee Harris has been the man for the Alabama offense today, and he is here again for about a four-yard game. And now we do Project Smarter presented by the Home Depot. Well, I'll tell you what's been sparked today. Get the ball in the hands of number 22. Good blocking up front. And Najee Harris, 11 rushes for 91 yards. Auburn came in the game saying, can Mac Jones beat us? They don't know yet because they can't stop number 22. With that last carry, now it's 12 for 95 with a four-yard pickup, second down and six. He'll get it again. Little hesitation, and he's going to lose some yardage this time. Loss of about three. Owen Papo, that outside freshman linebacker out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, has been getting better every week. Gets outside. Well, listen, nobody, no number three, number five. So who comes in? Newkirk, number 44, unblocked. But the big guys are in now. They are. Davidson and Brown are back in there on third down and eight. They'll be bringing that 640 pounds after the Alabama quarterback. Jones throws. It is intercepted on the fly. Smoke Monday. Touchdown, Otter. The Auburn defense has put the Tigers in front. He didn't have anybody in his face. He had the crossing routes in front of him. Good protection. Step up into throw, and it sails. Trying to throw the crossing route to Judy. And it just, no, actually it was Judy on the out route that time, and it just aimed it, and it sailed on him for a pick six. Honors Carlson, extra point is good. And they got the ability to put the pressure on Jones because they stopped Najee Harris to play before. Smoke Monday, one of the great names in college football. A touchdown, over.
Smoke Monday on a Saturday with his first interception of the season, and it's a pick six. Again, if you stop the run, you get an opportunity to not only rush the passer, but put coverage, just a bad throw. Jalen Waddle from about the two. Tried this last time, ended up with a penalty. This time, into the open field. Jalen Waddle, nobody's going to catch him. He'll take it. Coast to coast, touchdown, Alabama. Did you just see, like that. Did, did you see those last 20 yards when he accelerated? When he knew that that Auburn defender had an angle on him. Watch from about the 25-yard line in. Right there. When Ness said no one's going to catch him, nobody did. Jalen Waddle, the number one punt returner in the country. In this case, the number one kick returner at Jordan Hale. So everybody thinks all the momentum is going to Auburn, and all of a sudden... In 14 points. seconds, it's all different. <laughs> 17, 17. This guy is special. Once he gets an angle and turns on the Jets, it's over. Nothing waddling about that one. That's just blazing speed, and it's 17 apiece. So two touchdowns in a span of 14 seconds. 17, 17. How, how would you like to have a team where that's your number four receiver? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Forget about Ruggs and Smith and Judy. This, this Waddle guy's okay, too. Yes. Well, let's kick it off again. Well, you go pick six to kick off return. Now what happens next? <laughs> Joseph Bullivis has a team. Number 19, Matthew Hill. Noah Igbenogany and Matthew Hill. Back at the goal line, it's a high short kick. And I think a fair catch was already called for and will be taken right there by Schenker. So they'll start about where he caught it at the 25. So let's, it's this never easy for a quarterback. Ten guys do their job, nobody in front of you, wide open receiver, and you just sail it over his head for the toughest words for a quarterback to hear a pick six. But you got some good players on your team, and they get back 17-17 with a special number 17 doing it. And we've still got 5.22 to go in the second quarter. All kinds of fireworks in the 84th Iron Bowl yeah, so far. Yeah, these games at this stadium are pretty good. I don't yeah, know they are. <laughs> Not bad. That's Hastings in motion into the slot for Auburn. He fired. Yeah. That was Great coverage. Broken Great up. Coverage. Shane Lee, the linebacker. Trayvon Diggs back yes. there with Seth Williams. And the athletic <laughs> trivia question earlier. Two freshman quarterbacks to beat Nick Saban. We know one of them. Yep, Trevor Lawrence in the national championship, but Wesley Carroll in 2007 for Mississippi State. How about that? I bet Wesley Carroll never thought he'd get a mention in the, in the Iron Bowl. Congratulations, Wesley. And Trevor's still doing okay. Yes, he should be all right. Whitlock. Nice company lost the ball. Alabama's got it. It's Christian Harris with the fumble recovery. Xavier McKinney might have been the guy that popped it out. It was. He was missing the tackle, but with his left hand, he sticks it out and grabs right onto the football. Watch McKinney come up. Whitlow's going to beat him, but with his left hand, he reaches out and pops it loose. We promise more fireworks before halftime. We have them. At the 37-yard line. What a sequence. Three out of four plays. 
Got to get over it. Yep, he knows. A lot of football that movie. Yes, sir. And now do you just go back to number 22 and reestablish him? And we're going to give Matt Jones a shot. Pump fake, deep ball, left sideline. Devontae Smith in stride. Beautiful. They don't. Devontae Smith runs an out and up. Man-to-man -man coverage. Watch him go out and then up. Out, up, and a perfect throw. How about backing that one up? A pick six to a perfect throw for Matt Jones. Now back to 22. Maybe got a yard. Got to give Steve Sarkeesian credit for that. Longtime quarterback. We covered him back in the day, 95, 96. Yeah. A quarterback understands, I got to give my guy another throw, get him back in the game, and he performs it. What a way to get him back in the game. A 33-yard strike to the four-yard line. There's Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator. Gary and I did his games when he was at BYU. That's what Gary was talking about. Takes us back a ways. Yes, takes Sark does. back a ways. Second and goal at the three. Play action bootleg. Jones in trouble is just going to throw it in the dirt. And he goes in the dirt. Again, really good coverage that time for Auburn. The veteran, Daniel Thomas, number 24, handles the faking back out on the flat. Mack has nowhere to go with the ball, just lives to snap at another play. Obi Whitlow is hoping that that Auburn defense can hold here at least to a field goal. Third down a goal. And Kendall Randolph, number 85, the extra offensive lineman, is still in the game. Meanwhile, Auburn changes up some of their defensive personnel. And now we're going to have a timeout, I think, somewhere. Everybody trying to get their troops lined up where they want them. So 4-16 remaining. We got a third and a big goal for Nick Saban and the Tide when we come back. Alabama and Auburn deadlocked right now, but Alabama trying to change that as they've got a goal to go and trying to take advantage of the turnover. With 4.16 remaining, remember, they get the ball to start the third quarter as well, talking about the Tide. Yeah, and think about this play if you're Alabama and calling this play if you're Steve Sarkeesian. This is basically a two-point play call. You have a package of two-point plays. They're one-yard difference, and I think if you're looking on your two-point play calls and dial up one of those that you would maybe earmark for later. Tight end Tennyson is in there with Judy Smith and Ruggs, the wideouts. But keep an eye on number 22, Najee Harris. Third down and goal at the four. Jones bottled the snap, has to let go before he wanted to, but he got it to Ruggs for the touchdown. And you know, Ness, last time Mac Jones on the pick six has a clean pocket. This time Derek Brown does a spin move. Watch him get in his face right away. And Mac has to throw off his back foot and get it in for the touchdown. Boy, for a guy that threw a pick six interception, the 33-yard dart to Devontae Smith and then under oh, duress, and I mean duress, yes. puts it right on the money to Ruggs for the four-yard touchdown. So the fumble, definitely costly. And the extra point is good. Amazing, isn't it? Sometimes you get the perfect pocket. Guy wide open, you let it sail. You got some coming right at you, you just use your instincts and let that football go. And he just does it, what he's done maybe his whole life playing quarterback. Don't think about anything. Just under duress, let it fly. And he throws it perfectly. Sure did. And for Henry Ruggs, his seventh touchdown receiving of the year as Derrick Brown plants the Alabama quarterback. But Alabama plants seven more on the board. And they're up 24-17. And that was Mac Jones's drive right there. Get the one to Devontae Smith, and then he comes back with that one. Quarterback comparisons. The guy who plays so well at home, Bo Nix, struggling through a four for 12. And Mac Jones, everybody was worried about making his first start in a hostile environment. He has answered the call here in the last couple of minutes after the interception. Yeah, I, I think that Jalen Waddle kickoff return really gave him a, a, a nice deep breath there. Yep. You know, like, I got guys, 
I know I got guys that can make big plays. I just need to relax and do my job. And then, as you said, my offensive coordinator have enough faith in me to let me rip one down the sideline. Yeah, re really a great call. We're thinking, I'm thinking, they're going to go back to Najee, kind of scoot it through there a few times, and then go play action pass. He goes, no, give you a ball right back, and he hits him. Bulova's kick, fair catch called for at the 10-yard line by Shivers. And so Auburn will take over at the 25-yard line. Don't forget, coming up, Adam Rick and BJ will have first-half analysis scores and highlights all coming up on the Geico Halftime Reports. I think Gus Malzahn understands this as being maybe the key drive of the game. What's just happened to his football team? They get a kick six, and all of a sudden, 14 points are going up on the board. He knows Alabama gets the ball to start the second half. This is the drive he has to have to stay in the football game. The last 84 seconds have been pretty impactful in just about every way imaginable. Here's a give to Williams. Williams got out near the 30 before Shane Lee Williams stands him up. And we're down to four minutes in the half. Second down at five upcoming. There's a stunned silence right now in Jordan Hare Stadium. They were so fired up about five minutes ago. And that has been taken away by Alabama's two touchdowns. Nicks throws out in the flat to Hill. Hill trying to get to that first down marker, and I think he did. Great second and third effort. Yeah, not only does that obviously a first down give you three more downs, but it also takes potentially two and a half minutes off the clock as well. If Alabama doesn't use their timeouts to freeze them here. Well, he got that through five yes, tie tacklers. Redshirt freshman out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, worked hard for that first down. The ninth of the game for Auburn. Back to Williams, and he runs into a stone wall. Anthony Jennings and Christian Barmore meet him. Beautiful day on the plains. As you look atop Pat Dye Field at Jordan Hare Stadium, our aerial coverage is sponsored by State Farm. Brad Nestle, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl and our CBS crew here for the 84th Iron Bowl that has 2.40 remaining in the half. Williams again, and trying to run it here, trying to establish something. And Raquan Davis. Yes, he did, the big the man. Tackle. A bit Nick this week. Nick Saban said it was a game time decision, but watching Raekwon warm up, he knew he was going to play. He just handles Mike Horton that time and throws him away to make the tackle. He had a season high seven tackles on the Iron Bowl last year in Tuscaloosa. He's had a good first half here and has two minutes remaining. Whitlow back in the backfield on third down and eight. Nick's blitz is coming from Xavier McKinney. He's going to throw deep for Seth Williams. Did he make a one hand catch? Oh, he did. And if you're Patrick Sertan right now, you're just going, hey, great play. I can't cover you any better than that. And you caught it one hand, helped it in, and controlled it. Uh, that's as good as I can play defense. Perfect throw, great catch. Guy who grew up as a youngster being an Alabama fan, he said that changed in a hurry when I decided I was going to wear burnt orange and navy. Yeah. And he just got a 37-yard pickup and an Auburn freshman record for his quarterback with that catch. It's got Auburn down to the 25-yard line of the tie. Timeout. Timeout. I don't know if they didn't have the proper team in there, but Gus ran down the sideline and was not happy. Take you back to 93. Bo Nix's daddy, Patrick, going to the corner. Frank Sanders is there for the touchdown and a 22-14 Auburn victory. And today, just moments ago, it was his son, Bo, throwing a very similar pass this time to Seth Williams. And that has Auburn 
at least approaching the red zone there at the 25 yard line with 120 to go. And of course that first game of the year when he hit number 18 for the touchdown to beat Oregon may be the biggest impactful game of the season all year. First down from the 25. Knicks in trouble. Lofts it. Got it. Complete to Hastings. I thought for sure he was throwing it away. Hastings says no. I'm a, I'm a senior. <laughs> exactly. I want this one. Hastings lined up on the right. I, I think never think he saw. It. I don't think he saw. It. There's no <laughs> way he's going. And Hastings goes, get one foot in. That's all I need. Hastings who battled back from two knee surgeries last year, playing in his final never game at home. Saw him. Boy, that was. Yep. That looked like his dad getting a rebound back in the day. At the 14, first down. Taking the time, clock winding down, the play clock down to five. Oh my goodness. We're take another time oh out. my goodness. And I'll tell you what, that time, Gus has a, when he wants a play run, he points to the ground. And that tells the quarterback to go with it. But out there, Bo Nix just kept looking at him, didn't get it snapped, and he had to take another timeout. And this one hurts. This one hurts because that's it. Yeah, that's his last one. You can see Gus right down at the bottom. See if, see if we can see him pointing to the ground. He just did. Yeah. And they don't get it off in time again, and he has to take another timeout. Now, there's still plenty of time right. to call any play here, but... I always like to have that one time out in your pocket. What Gus and his assistant coaches have to put worried about is arguing on the sideline right now. Is that not going to get the time out back for him? I do have to say that these last two completions, you know, Bo Nix is struggling. He's, you know, five for 13, and he ends up hitting a perfect throw and then a miraculous throw to get the ball down here. This, this is Gus off. He runs the whole thing. In practice, he's on the headsets. He's doing the substitutions. He's calling the play. He is in charge of every part of this offense. First down, 112 remaining. Sal Canella down to the bottom of your screen. A bigger wide receiver. Nix pump fakes. Now goes to the end zone to Canella. Patrick Sertan is saying another perfect throw. It's a stop and go. Good coverage, but the tall guy gets it. Sal Canella, another senior out of Schaumburg, Illinois. All six, five of them, and he had to use it all at tiptoe at the end. What a catch. He had it in one hand. Patrick Sertan is 6'2", but Canella is 6'5". And the throw was perfect again. That is Canella's first touchdown catch of the year. And I didn't see him on the field before that play. We saw him there, that's for sure. 75 yards and seven plays for the Auburn Tigers. A little over three minutes. So Bodex looking up at his handiwork on this one. So which play was more improbable? The first one, great coverage, perfect throw, one-handed catch. That's then try to throw it away. One. Now I throw it away, and Hastings comes over and makes the catch. Vote number two. <laughs> or number three, bring a guy off the bench with a stop and go and a one foot toe dance. All three seem to be as good as each other. What a last five minutes of football we've had. Unbelievable. 106 still remaining in the half, so don't go anywhere yet. Canella, that's his ninth catch all year and his first touchdown grab. He had three touchdown receptions a year ago of his 12 catches. None bigger, though, than that one. Yeah, and just think about a guy being ready, and that's what Gus just said to him. I appreciate you. You know, he was more, getting more playing time, and then J.J. Wilson started to take some of his snaps. He throws them in there. He's asked to make the play, and he's ready to make the play. Honors Carlson's kickoff is high and short again. Yeah, no more to number 17. Trayvon Diggs will feel it at the 15. 
Trayvon Diggs on the return out across the 35 to the 37 with a minute to go with a half. One thing about Alabama, it's hard to kick away from a five-star returner. Yep. You got them all over the field. Diggs averaging 24 yards of return and another nice one there. So a minute to go and two timeouts for Alabama. And Mac Jones back out there with the offense. So how much has Mac Jones earned from his head coach and coordinator? The olden days, we'd start this thing off with a screen for Alabama, right? Let's see how different it is. Tennis with the tight end in motion. It's a wide out screen this time to Jerry Judy. It makes sense. Only about a four yard game though. Smoke Monday of that. The interception return for a touchdown makes the tackle. Nick Saban just took a timeout. With 45 seconds remaining in the half. And Alabama's got one left. So Nick says, come on over, let's talk about this. You think this one's fun? Why don't you hang out with us next Saturday at 4 Eastern on CBS. We'll crown an SEC champion. The high-powered LSU offense, the stingy Georgia defense. Number four and number two getting together. It all begins with a drive to Atlanta in college football today. It's the SEC championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. And how high-powered? How about Edward Zaleri's average in 160 yards per game? That's the most since Derrick Henry in the SEC. Here in the 84th Iron Bowl, we're deadlocked at 24 in the late stages of the second quarter. Mac Jones hit as he throws. Got a complete go to Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle off to the races again. Waddle, touchdown Alabama. <laughs> 58 yards. Holy cow. Derek Brown again gets pressure on Mac Jones. He hits him. As he lets the ball go, it's number five. As he lets it go, and then he gets up and turns around, and Waddle matched up, catches it, and once he goes, he goes. Second time he's gone today, this time as a receiver. And Christian Tuck, number six, is not fast enough to handle him. We saw it on the kickoff, and we saw it on that play right there. Extra point by Bulbas is good. Well, I said with a minute to go, don't go anywhere. There's still 33 seconds left in the half. And I said, this is a Ferrari offense. 70% of their yards come through the passing game. And in this game again, this Alabama offense is throwing the ball and gaining big yards with short throws. These yards after catch, so tough, so much of a dominance that they've been all year. Used to be slants with Tua. It's a little different with Mac Jones. Mac Jones has seen two touchdown passes that he did not see until he looked up on the jumbotron because he was on his back both times. But Waddle, even though Derrick Brown, an effort to get to the quarterback, not enough on it. He goes, guys, I can't get there any faster than that. I'm no. sorry. And you know, now the question for Alabama coming into this game, when the committee looks at him, they're saying, Will their offense work? It's so working. Far. It's starting to work. 45 points we've had in the second quarter. High pooch kick again and a fair catch taken around the 34-yard line by one of the young men. So Auburn takes over. Mac Jones' numbers are pretty impressive. 14 of 19, two touchdowns, and an interception return for a score. Yeah. It took a pick six for him to get it going big time, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 33 seconds, no timeouts for Auburn, though. Keep in mind, after they had to take two almost back to back on that last drive to get the touchdown that they did get. And now there's three seconds on the play clock, gonna have to hustle. Not sure Nix knows what he wants to do with it. He did get the snap. He's looking, scanning the field, in and out of the hands of Whitlow with 27 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, I, I think right now, if you're Gus Malzahn, you got to be really careful with your football team. You know, 31-24, you can't allow your freshman quarterback to make a mistake right now. 
Sun going down and the planes on a gorgeous last day of November of 2019. Knicks going to throw a wide out screen. Got it out to Eli Stove and Stove weaving through traffic. Got it to the 49. Clock will stop momentarily. Must safer throw that time for your quarterback. Get it out. Just out of your hand. Nothing bad can happen. And they get it spiked with 16 seconds remaining in the half. Eli Stone with his first catch of the day on that last play. Ball's only going to one guy. Everybody else downfield is blocking. Good block that time by Mike Horton downfield. They got it at the 48-yard line. You need about 20 yards for a 50-yard field goal. That stove in motion to the slot. Just a three-man rush. Nicks loads, now reloads. Trying to throw in a run. Incomplete intended for Stove. At least the closest guy is Andrew McKinney was covering. And the pressure was coming from Raquan Davis and company. It, it was, but there was good coverage that time. Only a three-man rush. Eight people drop in a zone. No clear way to throw the football that time for Bo Nix. Good coverage by Alabama. Nine seconds left. Third down. Hastings in motion. Maybe time for two plays here should they get a completion. Third and ten. They're going to have to hurry to get it to Whitlow. Whitlow blockers in front. Ruby Whitlow weaving through traffic. Got to get down. Time's going to run out. It is. Even if there was one second, there wouldn't be enough time to drop to snap the ball and put it down. Well, Gus Malzahn wants that one second. Holding up one finger and looking for it. You could not ground the ball with one second. And they don't have any timeouts, remember, because they used to almost on back-to-back -back plays earlier. And there's the three zeros. And they're still waiting right now to take a look at this, but uh, apparently it is halftime or not. We don't know Wait for sure. Now, could they try the field goal with one second to go? They're going to try to line up Anders Carlson. This is a crazy way to finish things, but we've seen just about everything already. Now, the previous play is under review. So the play is under review. Two, one. Can't see in all that pile of humanity. I can't, you can't tell when it was stopped. There might be a second. There might be. Meanwhile, it would be about a 52-yard field goal attempt if they can get this off. Nick was almost over to talk to Jamie Erdahl. He's back on the sideline to put his headset back on. And Gus Malzahn is debating. He says there should be two seconds left. Well, they only need one. We've been here That's before. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, trust me. <laughs> that was six years ago with you and Craig. After further review, there's one second remaining on the clock. So again, there's the look. They put one second back, and we go back to live action. Yep, the sixth anniversary of the one-second play. But Anders Carlson hit this from deep. Yeah, and he, you cannot spike it. The field goal question. His career long is 53 last year. Gene Steratore, our rules official, as Nick Saban still having some words about, wait a minute, I don't know about the second thing. You know, Brad and Gary, I think this is the best scenario Auburn could have possibly hoped for because if they would have stopped that clock with one second, as you guys had said correctly, we couldn't have a spike and, and the chances of getting a playoff would be slim to none. But in this situation, because replay gets involved and adds this second, now we do have a chance to put the field goal team on the field. And now the referee will blow the ball ready for play, but I would assume that he'll have that offense in a, in, in a set position to get that snap off within the second. So fair to say, Gene, without replay, they couldn't have got the playoff. Exactly. Otters Carlson with a second to go to try to draw Auburn three points closer. There's the whistle. There's a snap. The kick is on the way, and the kick is good. There's a flag down.
Oh, boy. Well, I'm sure Auburn will decline well, it. Well, yeah. Running into the kicker. Defense. That penalty is declined. Two goals good. Half is over. And what a half it was. Penalty on the kicker who drills it from 52 and then gets hammered. And he's not going to see that go through until he looks, sits up. And Nick Saban on the sideline, not a happy guy. On the other side, yes, boom. Let's go down to Jamie. Coach, how was that situation just explained to you? Well, they said there was one second on the clock, but it's a live clock. So if they chop the clock, there's no way they could snap it and kick it in one second. If you clock the ball, you got to have three seconds to do it. So I don't get it, but it is what it is. We just have to keep playing. How would you approach Mac Jones's situation here going from a pick six to two touchdown drives. Well you know we just got to keep playing you know we knew there was going to be bad plays in the game and our whole team has got to keep playing you got to play for 60 minutes and you got to keep trying to make plays everybody. Thanks coach. Well, thank you. Alabama doesn't lose much when they have a lead at halftime they have a lead but it is a slim one now after the end of the first half with a 52 yard field goal for Auburn. Alabama 31, Auburn 27. Let's go to Adam Zucker and the guys in our New York studios. Huh? Oh, Ness, one second can last a lifetime in the Iron Bowl. And coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick, BJ, and I will tell you about the top-ranked Buckeyes and their big day at the Big House after this word from your local station. The 84th Iron Bowl that had 10 total points in the first quarter had 48 in the second quarter. So who knows what's coming next? We've still got a half of football to play at Jordan Harris Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Number 15, Auburn, and number five, Crimson Tide of Alabama. Ness, with six minutes to go, it was 10 10. Yeah. They scored 38 points in the last six minutes. Five touchdowns and a field goal. Yeah, and the last three were kind of controversial, and we'll go back to that in a second. After that, he's gone, so they get a 52 yard field goal with one second remaining kicks off and look out for yes. Jalen Waddle from the goal line this time nothing good job by the special teams get down there and make a stop at about the 12 yard line after 83 previous Iron Bowls you think you've seen it all till you hit the 84th well, line. we've seen one second before here but this was a little different one second meant a lot in this situation let's take you back to the play that ended the first half it was Booby Whitlow on this run and going down and Gene Sterator is with us, our rules expert. They put one second back on the clock, Gene. Yeah, and this is where I think we've crossed the bridge from now technology is involved. So as we've all seen, the elbow was down with one second. The clock went to zero. The only thing we do now with this technology is stop this game to make a formal review to see if the player was down, getting the first down with a second on the clock. They did that. Technology gets involved. We add the second. Now, once the field goal team comes on the field, guys, look, and they're in offensive formation, if I'm a referee, I wind this clock, and he gets the snap off. We're going to have a play. And this is technology. I'm old enough to know what it was like without technology, <laughs> and this is what we have with technology. The only problem for me is when you don't have any timeouts left and the review helps you get one more playoff, that seems a little bit strange. You know, for, for me in this one, it was kind of a bad break for Alabama that the clock didn't get the, properly handled, but it's a bad break. That's yeah. the rule. You put the one second back on, you're allowed to get your team out there. He made the kick. That's the way it goes. And like Nick told Jamie going to the locker room, we just got to keep playing anyway. What's the difference? Yep. And play on we do, and it's third down at 11. From the 11, Mac Jones. Here comes a blitz. Jones near his own goal line. In trouble. Just going to throw it away. So it's a three and out to open the third for the Crimson Tide. Let's put it this way. There's a lot of seconds left in this game. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> I don't want to do that math right now. <laughs> I know. But believe me. Well, Christian Tutt. He had a 37-yard punt return earlier. Should get a great shot at this one. As Ty P. Ryan is his, in his own end zone for kick. Tut runs up on it at the 49. Christian Tut ball is out, but it's out of bounds. 
So Auburn will retain possession. Luckily, Christian Tutt has been in the center of the hurricane all game. He had the punt return to set up the play. He was beat on the Jalen Waddle touchdown play where you get to the sideline. He's been in the middle of it. Let's check in with Jamie. First thing Gus Malzahn said to me coming out of the locker room is we're running short on wide receivers. So here's what's going on. Anthony Schwartz is out of the game for Auburn. Eli Stove was still in the locker room receiving an IV after that first half. And Matthew Hill, he thinks, is unavailable. At that point, he just doesn't know what he has in his offensive wet set. Excuse me, his set. He said, get this game to the fourth quarter and we can win. That was his whole talk with us yesterday. We were in it at halftime last year and we let it slip away. Can't let that happen again this year. They'll keep it on the ground at D.J. Williams. And we take a look at the first half game trends. Bo Nick started cold, warmed up with a touchdown pass. Mac Jones had one return for a score, but hung in there to throw two. And Jalen Waddle has been sensational, sensational. as a return man and a receiver. We we opened up the broadcast with the kicking game being a possibility yeah. to be the difference. And uh, Jalen Waddle has been a star in this game. Second down and six. In Alabama territory at the 37. DJ Williams. Short game, maybe a yard. And Raquan Davis again in on the mix on the tackle. Well, in the two wins for head coach Gus Malzahn against Alabama, his team average rushed for 232 yards. In the four losses, only 115 yards a game. You can see as he gets into this game, they rush for 72 yards. He can sense, especially what Jamie said, injuries to wide receiver, he needs the running game. Right now it's an empty backfield for Bonex on third down and four. Bo with a quick throw in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, yeah. Whitlow. You gotta make that catch. Whitlow had the fumble. He was upset with himself, and now he's got the perfect pass coming over the middle. And he drops it. Canella kind of got a little of a, of a rub on the play and opened them up wide open for can't throw it any better than that. Well, Otters Carlson is going to try another field goal. This is going to be deeper than the one he hit right before halftime. His career long is 53. This is going to be close to 55. 54 yard field goal attempt. Can he hit another long bomb? Jump offside. Oh Goodness. And did he make it? He made it for 54. But it was the play kill. Did he know. not have a chance I'm to kick sure it? I'm not sure if the whistle blew. Yes. They're going to tell Gus Malzahn. And I, I think it'll be a first down, won't it? I think it's less it than five yards. Yeah, yes. It was fourth and four. Offside, defense number seven. A five yard penalty will result in a first down. One at the end of the half when he ran into the kicker with no time to go. He isn't dodging this one. He jumps off. He's at the bottom of the screen right here. Watch him jump off. And that's the penalty and the first down. Now you just don't want to make any mistakes and take three points off the board. Well, what well, did the kick count? Did, or did they blow it early and, and the kick wasn't even uh, all there was right, no kick? All I know it was good. <laughs> yes, it was good. First down of the 31. Stove in motion. They're going to throw it to him out in the flats. Eli Stove to the 25. The field goal was good, we're told, from the truck, but they decided to take the penalty and the first down. So on we go with the offense. Knicks tripped up by Terrell Lewis. A little bit quiet so far in this game. Anthony Jennings is doing, been doing a great job, but this time Lewis stays home. You see him right there, right at, gets right underneath the block that time for Samuel Schenker and makes the play. That's Miles I told us yesterday, don't be surprised if Bo Nix carries it 10 to 15 times, five times so far, but a loss on that play to the 25. And now the throw is too low. Out in the flat. It was called incomplete. Not a backward pass. Joyner was the guy that Bo Nix was aiming a pass at in the late stages against Georgia. Yeah. And he threw it behind him. This one he threw it too low for him. Right. Fourth down play against Georgia that everybody thought would have been a first down play. Right. Now this is where you go back and you say, Anders, 
you hit from 54. We took the first down. We're going to try a shorter one. Can you please make this one too? <laughs> They'll try from 43. This is pretty ironic if he misses this, isn't it? Not going to miss it, though. Perfect. Boy, he's been money today. He sure has. No harm, no foul. Got three more chances. And he drills it. Honors Carlson. 43 yard field goal. We're down to a one point game. From the Bear to a Heisman winner in Pat Sullivan and 83 previous Iron Bowls, number 84 is a dandy in progress. 31 to 30. Marquel Harrell, offensive lineman, was injured on that field goal. And now here's Carlson again with the pooch kick. They want to keep it out of the hands of Waddle. And they almost lost it back there. Take you back to the 43-yard field goal. Yeah, I think number 59, Ham, blocks his guy into Harrell's right leg. And right there. That's fallen on. I think it was Brian Young, number 47, that fell on his right leg. So Auburn's had two guys, Derek Brown and Markwell Harrell, injured on kicks today. Don't see that very often. Nope. Field goal and an extra point. There's a, there's a lot we don't see very often. When you come <laughs> That's here. true in this game. Alabama was three and out in the first drive of this half. Let's see how they do from the 24-yard line. Najee Harris. And Najee got about three or so. K.J. Britton company bringing down there. Yeah, about the last five or six minutes of that first half, just because of time and what happened, they went away from Najee Harris. Not surprised they're going back to him. Najee closing in on a 100-yard day on the ground. In the last three weeks, Najee Harris has had a rushing and a receiving touchdown. That's something that hasn't happened for a running back in like 20 years. Second down and seven. Mac Jones under center. Haven't seen much of that here today either. But it's Najee Harris trying to get to the edge with a stiff arm. Diving forward, he'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Those are those ugly yards. You know, it looks like you got him stopped. Pretty good defense all along the line of scrimmage. Bounce him outside. The big tall running back gets around the corner and just makes an ugly good play. That puts him at 101 for the game, but he still needs two more here. Third and two. Najee's got the two. He's got some more. And look at him punish. Wow. That's Derrick Henry-ish right there. Got it out to the 44 and another Alabama first down. Right up the middle. Oh, you get help from two blockers. Kendall Randolph, the offensive lineman, the extra tight end, number 85. He's an offensive lineman wearing an 85 number. Comes in and cleans up. And as you said, that he puts that 230 yes. pounds forward. He'll get a quick breather here. Brian Robinson in, in his stead. And the Alabama backfield. First down at the 44. Play action. Jones, the back shoulder throw. Is he out of bounds? Complete to Henry Ruggs. He was very close to having his feet out of bounds, but he made the catch. Well, fastest guy on this Alabama team, and McCreary has to respect that, and he tight ropes and stays in. Beautiful back shoulder throw. Amazing how these guys know yes. where their feet are Amazing. at all times. Yep, then he steps out. He steps out there, but he already yep. had the first down catch. How would you like to play bump and run against that? No, thanks. Under a 4-3-40, Ruggs runs. And then he can do the back shoulder stop on him. They fake it to him. Jones is going deep for Devante Smith. Incomplete. A flag flies in on Igbenogany. Well, I thought he cut him off pretty well there. Igbenogany very upset with that call. Let's see if the two officials don't get together and think about this call. Is it even close to catchable? Uh, well, you never know. There's no foul for pass interference. The ball is incatchable. It's second down. He picked it up. You could see the one linesman go at him, but he cut him off. Igman Agony was outraged with the call when he turned around. Yeah, you're going to see his ball is about eight yards in front of him and floating out of bounds at the time, so that's why they picked up the flag. Cuts him off. That you ball's play. not even in the screen. Yes. <laughs> Devontae Smith is pretty quick, but not that yeah, quick. Yeah, and he's not that tall either. <laughs> so second and ten. Jerry Judy out in the flat. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh, yes, 
yes, the flag he flies in late. Yes, he did. I Jeremiah think Denson. Yes, he did. You know when Jerry Judy gets the football, you have to close that space quickly. Looks like there almost was a hold on the play, too, by Waddle. Did that get called? I thought number 17 grabbed. That ball foul. foul. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. Number 20. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So they only saw the second one. They did not catch Waddle. Was it enough? We saw it in our screen late. You can see the late hit. That's a good call. The crowd just saw the other angle of Waddle holding on the play, and they got a pretty big screen here to see it. One of the biggest in the country. Yes. First down. You can see him Judy. right here. Stays in there to the top of your screen. Jones, here comes Davidson. Throwback screen. Najee Harris. Harris with blockers. Inside the 10 to the 9. He knew all along, Mac Jones did. This is the throwback screen. People do it with tight ends. You do it with running backs. But as you're coming out, you're drawing that defensive end towards you, and you turn around and throw that one blind. First and goal, Alabama. Three out of four on this drive for Mac Jones. Smith, Judy, and Waddle all in tight, the receivers, and Dennison, Tennyson the tight end, but it's going to be number 22, and might have gotten a yard. Zacoby McClain hanging on for dear life. He did. He came right around the corner, unblocked, and just played run all the way on that one. Linebacker lined up. There were 11 men at basically the defense was within a yard and a half of the line of scrimmage. Now let's see if Alabama will spread those wide outs wider. Kevin Steele said the receiver who's best off the line of scrimmage is Devontae Smith, number six. Nobody's bumping running him. Jones steps up. He's going to run it. And he goes down at the five. It'll be third and goal. Made that decision in a hurry. And got what he could and got down. I think he wanted to go to Smith that time. They double covered him. He saw it right away and got out of the play and made something positive happen. Good decision by Mac Jones. Third down a goal. So does Auburn put pressure on Mac Jones here? Crowd is trying to put pressure on Mac Jones here. Waddle in motion. Jones looking back the other way. Lobs to the end zone. Flag down. Devontae Smith, the intended receiver, and we're going to have a penalty. Yeah, it was early holding on the play. Grabbed him early in the play, and he's going to get called on it. Watch the grab coming off the line of scrimmage on Smith. Remember, we just said that's the guy Kevin Smith said has the best off the line of scrimmage, and he won at the line of scrimmage. Javaris Davis is going to be penalized here as... Ken Williamson will make the announcement for us. In a I second. ask Kevin Steele, who's the holding, best? Holding on the defense, number 13. That penalty will be declined. Personal foul, rough on the pass, or contact to the head. Defense number three. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Well, Marlon Davidson. So we're looking at holding and. Well, he got his face mask there at the end. Well, I don't know. Did he get it? I, I thought it was on his shoulder, to tell you the truth. Marlon was pointing to the screen. I thought his left hand was behind him. Neither, neither way, they were going to get a first down on this play. I think it's the face mask and the twist right yeah. there on the helmet. Yeah. Either anyway, way, it's at the three-yard line. First and goal. Najee Harris, an eye backfield. Najee gets the call, and he has blasted at the line of scrimmage. Britt is there. And McLean is there. That's a twosome for a linebacker. When you get both your linebackers, nobody's running through that. Brent McLean, both of them feel at the same time, fill that hole and make the tackle. Alabama, to attack of Aloha, can only look on with the injured hip. He's watching the big screen. Mac Jones is back up the starter today for the third time this year and the most important time. And it's second down and goal just outside the three. 
Jones wants to throw. Does. Incomplete. Intended for Billingsley, the tight end, and two is in. How about holding? Right. And that was Jamie and Sherwood, number nine, who was not eligible to play in the first half because of a targeting penalty last week against Sam. Pass interference. Defense number nine. Yep. Penalty will place the ball at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Billingsley goes out, comes back in, and Sherwood enters the game with a penalty. So two penalties gives Alabama more and more chances. Left side of your screen, he'll enter, and he grabs it. Third first down by penalty on this drive alone. First and goal again. The third time I've said that. <laughs> Ale Cahill is in the backfield. Normally a linebacker as a lead blocker. Jones throws it to Harris behind him. It's intercepted. Picked off. And it's Jacoby McClain. Can he take it? Are you kidding me? 100 yards, touchdown. Can we see any more? I think this hit Najee Harris in the back and bounced to McClay. It did. Heavy pressure on Mac Jones. He tried to get rid of it. It was a half yard short, and a half yard short cost him a hundred yard interception. Zacoby McLean, as they're going to take a look at a replay of this, I guess. That was on first and goal first from the two-yard line. As you said, the third opportunity. Pressure in his face to start with. Has to throw it, picks a spot. It bounces off of Najee Harris for the pick six. The second one we've had in this game. Zacoby McLean, sophomore out of Valdosta, Georgia, thinks that he almost ran all the way to Valdosta. And he dropped the ball after he went past the line, but not by much. They were reviewing whether he crossed the goal line, and he did yeah, when he let a, it go. He's a whole foot in, a uh, yeah, higher stride. That is, that is something I'd be practicing if I was a head coach. Everybody runs to the back pylon before you drop the ball. The Kobe's going, I haven't run that far in a long time, man. What an unbelievable turn of events. I that think it was ended a 10 yard, 74 yard drive in over five minutes for Alabama by three penalties. They had it first and goal at the two, and it ends up Auburn in front by 36 31, with 37 coming up by Carlson. And that's good. <laughs> I think it's. Big Cat Bryant, number one, who puts the pressure on, coming from the, the outside. Has to get rid of it. Najee tries to make the backhand catch. And then coming right at you. What a turn of events. I don't think you want to go anywhere. We still got about 21 and a half minutes of football left in the Iron Bowl. All ends would begin. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Ford, Chick-fil-A, The Home Depot, and by Allstate. Auburn has scored the last 13 points. First time with two interception returns. Touchdowns against Alabama. No, I was in short pants. It's a long time ago. Here's a pooch kick again. And it's fielded. Not fair caught, apparently, by Latou, the tight end. And that's pretty good field position. It is. And give those yardage in that field position to number 17. He doesn't run it out there, but the threat yep. of that kickoff return gives Alabama great field position. So now Mac Jones who hit Nazi Harris 
in the back on that last pass, and he's still over there trying to fire up his troops, and so is Coach Saban. I thought the Alabama players were great to Mac Jones. Four or five of them went to him directly, tapped him on the helmet. I saw, I think it was Judy went up to him and said, we're okay, we're okay, that happens, we got time. A lot of time. 6.27 in the third. 37-31. First down as Alabama is going to work right around the 37 yard line. Devontae Smith in motion. They're just going to drop it to him. Smith trying to get to the far edge and only get a couple yards. Javaris Davis is there to make the stop. Amazon Music brings you today's scholar athletes, Terrell Lewis. For Alabama and Anders Carlson, who's been big with his right foot today for Auburn. Amazon Music showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Alabama and Auburn's General Scholarship Fund. Devontae Smith, who just made that catch, trots out to the left side. As you look from behind the Auburn defense. Play action, throw on the sideline is caught. Henry Ruggs lit out. Rubs across the 40 to the 39. This was another RPO to the outside. Had a run play called with a back shoulder throw. Seems almost unfair to be able to do that, doesn't it? <laughs> Pick up a 24. Not only do I have to bed, bump and run, I have to cover him deep and the stop. Perfect throw. Jones pulls it in on 200 yards passing. He's got it now. Whoop, he doesn't have it now. Jerry Judy forgot to take the ball with him. They went after, again, number six, Christian Tutt. It seems to be a spot that Steve Sarkeesian likes against this Auburn secondary. So second down and 10 at the 38. Alabama's had it twice as long as Auburn today, but they're behind. Jones. Nick Cole applying pressure down the middle to Monte Smith. He's down to the 12 yard line. Play action pass with plenty of time. That time Mac Jones was able to step up in the pocket twice. Watch up, up again, stay with it, and hit a wide open crossing route. Easiest pass to complete for a quarterback. Two steps up, get your momentum behind you, and throw to a wide open player. Pick up a 26. Down to the 12-yard line of Auburn. Alabama trying to answer and regain the lead. It's got that matchup again. 17 against six. Najee Harris with Mac Jones. Blitz coming off the corner. Throws to the corner of the end zone. Waddle! Touchdown! Jalen Waddle. Third time he's been in the end zone today. Well, Sark saw what I saw. He's got a guy out there that he thinks has got a good matchup. It's like basketball or anything else. He thinks number six can't cover this guy, and he can't. And a perfect throw from Mac Jones. What a day this kid's having. Wow. Got to give credit for Mac Jones. Two pick sixes, and he's come back after both of them to throw touchdowns. An all-important point after for Bullitus to break the tie, and he does. Seesawing back and forth at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Mac Jones has thrown a couple that ended up going the other way, but he's keeping his team alive by hitting guys when he has to. 63-yard drive and five plays. Waddle in the end zone again, and the tide flows back in front. This Thursday, gather around for the new hit show about what it takes to move on and start over with a little help from your friends. The Unicorn, Thursday at 8.30, 7.30 Central on CBS. The Unicorn's about the only thing we haven't seen today That's so for far. for sure. Hey, that's all when I screw up, you, you build me up after. Watch the Alabama players get to Mac Jones. The last one is Waddle, number 17. <laughs> that's being a great teammate. And what happens? You end up getting the payoff for it. You go, you say, all right, we're okay, we're okay. You end up, that's what good teammates do after a mistake. 
38-37. You do that to me all the time. I try. Kick to the two-yard line. Aikman Agony. And Noah gets out to about the 25. Jalen Waddle today. <laughs> he needs to rest over there. Well, and they're not even kicking off to him. No. Okay, so his numbers are, are, are amazing. 202 yards in this football game already. And what an impact. With and without the football. He changed the game against Texas A&M with his punt returns. He did. Today he's changed it just about every way you can. So now Bo Nix goes back to work. We're getting there, folks. <laughs> We've got a long ways to go. Little hesitation, and now Whitlow into the secondary for Bobby Whitlow. Yep, and that's his patented spin right there. When Whitlow is healthy, that's how he finishes off runs. He had 61 yards in this game a year ago against Alabama. Gets into the same. Watch that spin. Right there at the end. Of right it. there. Yep. That helped him get some more yardage out of a 17-yard run out to the 43. Joyner now comes in to the lineup for Auburn. On a first down. In the pistol set, Bo Nix pointing things out. He's got Hastings over in the slot. And they keep it on the ground. That is one tough yard right so, there. Listen, Gus has made his mark playing fast football, but he knew in this game he was going to have to use it very judiciously. His defense is gassed. They're having trouble getting stops. He wanted to go fast there, but he slowed him down. He went no huddle, but he used the clock as long as he could. He's got a defense that can't get any stops. He's got to give him some help with some time off the clock. Whitlow got a breather after that 17-yard run, and now he's right back in there. They fake the end around a stove. Nix loads it, fires on the run, completes, and the ball is out. Maybe it's incomplete. Seth Williams, and was, they're going to say incomplete. Was he bobbling it all the way? Should have been caught. And for Auburn, fortunate that he bobbled it. Let's see if he catches it. Yeah. Was never really in there, I don't think. Hit him in the hands, <laughs> and then McKinney can't, immediately there. Can't tell in either one of those whether he was bobbling it or not from those two looks. McKinney trying to do the strip thing at the end. At any rate, it's incomplete. It's third and nine. They have to get in Alabama territory at the 47 for a first down. Here comes Darrell Lewis and Jennings and Nick's double pumps. Throws late and incomplete. Uh oh, might be a 15 yard penalty. That's Whitlow. Oh, he smacked Barlow on the head and did not get called for it. Now we got flags all over the place. Second guy that swings usually gets called. Barmore and Whitlow were the two involved in this little. Dust up. Fracas, I was going <laughs> to use. Here's the call. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 28, defense number 33. Those fouls were offset, the penalties were canceled. The down will count, it's now fourth down. That's the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul for both players. Really like the call there by the official. Both guys reacted. Both guys had a personal foul, and that's a way not to make an impact on the game. And both guys are on notice. Don't get another one or you're gone. Armore reacted way late, and that could have been 15 more yards for his football team because Whitlow hit him early. So as it is, it's fourth down in a putting situation. Didn't seem like we had a punt in a while. Well, number 17 is going to be the guy that catches it. Sip boss. It's just saying, where's number 17 so I can kick it as far away from him as possible? And you see where number 17 is, flanked over outside the hash mark on the near side. Now we run to the other side. Auburn changed the direction, so he anticipated it. And it went right down the middle, actually. Takes a high hop. They're going to down it around the seven is where the beanbag came in. I think they're going to move it out closer to the eight or nine. But well done by the putter to keep it from number 17. We'll be right back.
Offsetting on Sportsmanlike kind of penalties before that last punt, and here's why. Now, Christian Barmore, number 58, and Whitlow are in the middle of it. Whitlow gives him the shove first. Barmore's going to get in there, but watch Anthony Jennings, number 33, see what's going on, and he gets in the middle of it, too. And he gets shoved, and he shoves him back, and uh, there's the offset. And Barmore is the innocent party. Exactly. <laughs> It was that second wave when Jennings came in there. <laughs> what the heck? And now after the punt, a good one. Alabama back up to its 10-yard line. Well, you remember what Gus Malzahn told Jamie at halftime? We want to get it to the second half. Yep. Fourth quarter, excuse me. Get it to this fourth quarter. He needs his defense now to get a stop. Mac Jones under center. And to give Najee Harris, and he only got a yard. And a tough one, K.J. Britt met him right in the hole. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game. I don't want to yeah, pick, I'm it. not picking this thing. Presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Just remember, with six minutes to go in the half, they scored 38 points with six minutes to go. Najee Harris might have hurt his left arm a little bit on that last carry. It got him only a yard. To the 11. So Brian Robinson then there for him. Jones going to go deep near sideline. And out of bounds intended for Devontae Smith. And that's good coverage by Igbenogany again. That's a tough matchup with Devontae Smith. He forces the throw to be wide. Coverage was too good on the play. Najee comes back in, so he's all right. They need him on third down and nine. And when is Derek Brown or Marlon Davidson are going to make that big play with that front four. They're in there, number five and number three. Brown has got in there a lot of times, but by the time he got to the quarterback, the ball was gone. Here they come at Mac Jones again. He stands tall, rips it downfield, incomplete, intended for rugs. And it was Roger McCreary in the coverage, and Alabama's got a punt. Well, Deontay Brown, number 65, matched up against Derek Brown. Let's see what happens right there. Right guard, steps up, nowhere to go. Great protection. Brown's hoping it's a short pass so he can block it, but nowhere near the quarterback. Good job by Deontay Brown, 65. Ty P. Ryan will punt from his own end zone, and that's Christian Tut, who had a big one earlier. This one, Tut's going to have to call for a fair catch around the 43-yard line, but good field position with 2.25 remaining. Man, what a game. And still a lot of game left. Our aerial coverage sponsored by State Farm as you look in at 87,451. And Pat Dye Field at Jordan-Hare Stadium for the 84th edition of the Iron Bowl. And it was so named by Shook Jordan back in 1964 when they used to play it at Legion Field in Birmingham. And they weren't going to a bowl game that year. And somebody said, what about the bowl game? He said, we have a bowl game every year. It's called the Iron Bowl in Birmingham. And it's stuck. And it's become one of the great rivalries in sports. Booby Whitlow, a stiff arm, and he goes out to the 21-yard line. Well, who carved out that play? You've got to give that offensive line credit on this one. Great job by Driscoll, number 71. He comes down in the double team, and then he fits the linebacker to get that crease. 22-yard pickup. I mean, rather, a 36-yard pickup to the 22, and then one more. And, and Auburn went hurry up, ran the same play, and nothing. You know Alabama knows what's coming. When Auburn goes fast football, they, they repeat the play. And Christian Harris goes down. But just under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah, he he tweaked his ankle right at the end of that middle of that play, basically, and he could feel it. In the middle of the play, let's see what number eight is on the right side right here. Yeah, you he can was see it. He's hobbling fast. before he, he made, was yeah. before he made the play. We'll check out him when we come back. Christian Harris, a true freshman linebacker, starter for the Tide, goes into the observation tent. And while back on the field, Bo Nix, play action goes. Back to the throw to Williams near the goal line, incomplete. And he and Trayvon Diggs get all tangled up. And now we got
got a few words going on between yep. those guys. Xavier McKinney and now Williams throws. Seth Williams. That was not smart. There's... That's not going to be a two-wayer, I don't think. Nope. And... Bo Nix, the freshman, saying, dude, you can't do this. No, and, and Diggs exited the area very quickly. They just got tumbled up, and this is where the emotions can have great coverage, tries for a back shoulder throw, and then they get tangled up. And right away, Dig, Trayvon Diggs just gets out of there. But Seth Williams gets a little frustrated as he walks, or he's trying to get it, and little. Seth Williams gets frustrated with that act. I don't think he was doing that on purpose. And now uh, Diggs gets out of the way, and here comes yep. Xavier McKinney, and Seth Williams says, uh, Xavier. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 18, 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Down the count. Well, the crowd is going to boo, but that's the right call. I thought Terrell Lewis came over with a little bit of talk, and that was what set off. Well, the first half of the set off was that. McKinney's there, and then number 24, Lewis, comes over, and that leads to one more ill advised punch. Well, we told you Seth was an Alabama fan when he was young. Certainly not an Alabama fan right now. Out of Cottondale, Alabama. <laughs> Empty backfield for Bo Nix. It's third down and a whole bunch. They got to get all the way down here to the 13 yard line to pick up a first down. Going to throw a little quick screen to Eli Stove. And Stove gets positive yardage, which will give Anders Carlson a lot better shot at another field goal. I thought that was a great call again. Young quarterback. You're in the football game, a one point game. Get the opportunity to get three points on the board. And Anders has been doing that with regularity today. He's three for three, 43, 52, 43. We'll change this one a little bit up for him and call it 44. And they, but they took a 54 yarder off. That's right. right. Yep. From 44, Anders Carlson to try to give Auburn the lead back. And this one just is in there. And it's good. That was close. Well, one second, one foot, whoops, it's close. It was that close, but it's good. And it's 40 to 38, Auburn. 49 seconds remaining in another wild quarter. Auburn. A 32-yard drive and five plays to get that 44-yard field goal from Anders Carlson, who's got it teed up, and I assume is going to pooch another kick here to try to keep it away from Jalen Waddle. Nope, he's going to kick away this time. And backpedaling is Trayvon Diggs, and he slips down. I'm pretty sure his knee touched. Uh, he knows it. So all different styles of kicks. They tried to kick it out of the end zone, po pooched it, and this one placed it, and he's down on the 10 yard line. We saw that. They're gonna move that ball back to the 10. They have to. They right now have it at the 17, but as I said, he slipped and his knee hit at the 10. Yeah, at least 90,000 people saw that one. Yeah. Here in the stadium. Well, what's at stake other than bragging rights for the Iron Bowl? Keep in mind, Alabama's in the five spot. Try to make the college football playoff. They've done it twice before without winning the championship. They have no idea what the committee will think. They got to win the game first before they think about anything else. Though. And right now they're behind. Waddle in motion. They fake it to him. Jones scrambles up, climbs the pocket, and throws across the middle on the run. Henry runs. And Ruggs out near the 45-yard line. You get the feeling that Mac Jones is really getting the feel of this football game. The more snaps he takes, the more comfortable he is. He's feeling the rush, keeping his eyes up the field. Mac Jones has done his job in this football game. He's had a couple tough plays. The first pick six, yes. The second one, just one of those deals sometimes. Now back to Najee Harris. Harris, again, dragging would-be tacklers with him. Another strong run. He's well over 100 yards on the day. You know, and also what's unfolding here as we enter the fourth quarter, this Auburn defense is already faces. We look at 
Daniel Thomas, 62 plays. They're on a pace for plus 80 plays wow. in this game. The defensive line gets tired. You never get the gas back. Those big guys never get it going again. Daniel Thomas, who's involved on that tackle, still down, one of the senior captains out of Montgomery. Part of a really, really talented secondary for Auburn. And here comes 230 pounds of Najee Harris. Jeez. Thomas felt the impact right Remember there. Remember when we were in uh, Tuscaloosa early in the year and they were a little bit frustrated with Najee Harris not running the spots. He wasn't hitting his spots and trusting his blocking. I think he's figured it out yes. pretty well. They said he lost his stinger. I think the stinger is back yes. in the last couple months. And there's Najee on the sideline. Daniel Thomas came into this game with a 185 career tackles making his 27th start and there's his buddy Jeremiah Denson they're like inseparable the two captain safeties back there we spent time with both of them yesterday three seconds remaining as Gus Malzahn comes out to have a look at his defensive captain. And he's up, but I don't know if he's going to be able to come back. The left leg. And it crumpled on him on that yeah, attempted not, tackle of Najee Harris. Yeah, when, when Najee had that ball in his opposite hand, he gave him that forearm as he came out. And that's when it looked like Thomas got his foot stuck in the ground on the play. Holy cow. It's big boy football here, isn't it? Yep. Watch him deliver that right forearm. Najee just doesn't use a stiff arm. He uses his whole body. Yes, he does. And the third quarter will come to a close now that they've got Daniel Thomas over to the sideline. What an iron bowl it's been for three quarters. This crowd is hoping their team can hold the lead. 40-38 at the end of three. Overturned to Auburn right after this message and a word from your local station. Second most points in Iron Bowl history combined between the two teams, and we've still got 15 minutes to go. We start the fourth quarter. Auburn clinging to a lead at home. 86,000 are here. 186,000 will say they were here when this one's over, probably. And we start the fourth with Alabama with a flea flicker coming up. Mac Jones going deep. Incomplete double coverage back there. Henry Ruggs was the intended receiver. And we welcome you back, Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson. Partner, we've seen a little bit of everything. You got a quarter left in you? I do, but uh, <laughs> the last time in the second quarter, 48 points. Yeah. So we have 48 points possible still in this fourth quarter. What do you think, last team that has the ball? It could be, but I will say this. Both quarterbacks feel like they're getting the feel of the game, especially Mac Jones. He seems to have earned the respect of his play caller right now, Steve Sarkeesian. Third down and a big one here early in the fourth quarter. Mac Jones snap seemed a little bit late and a flag down. Part of the ball being snapped. Don't start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty. It remains third down. They call it on Deontay Brown, yeah. the right guard. You see why Nick Saban was upset. So on. You know, second down, you know, they tried the free picker. Get a big, get a big play. Yep. Okay. Then you got a position, well, we can pick it up on third down. Now it's third and long. Third and ten. From the 43. Crowd really getting into it right now. Jones, a quick throw over the middle, and is caught by Devontae Smith at a first down, Alabama. Again, toughest guy to cover at the line of scrimmage is Devontae Smith. Watch him win right at the beginning of the pass route. Boom. He gets inside McCreary. Pitch and catch. And into Auburn territory on that throw. They needed 10. They got 14. Najee Harris, second effort, flag down. As he went for about five again. Yeah, there was a lot of substituting going on there as Devontae Smith is still limping on the play. 
from the previous play, the one he caught the square in on. Substitution infraction, defense, yep. 12 players on the field to snap. Five yard penalty remains first down. Alabama went hurry up and caught the Auburn defense and substituting and Devontae Smith finished out the play even though he was injured. Watch him limp to his spot because he knew it was a hurry up. That's the second time a legal substitution call on Auburn today. So that takes one of the weapons out at least for this play. Najee Harris. First down run, taking players with him down around the 27-yard line. Big Alex Leatherwood again. Left tackle, watch him handle the edge rusher. Gets him out of the way. Easy one. We saw that in the first half, and we see it in the second half. Evan Neal, the true freshman, number 73, the monster of a man, also gets his defensive tackle pin. True freshman, number 73, Neal, gets a good block. First down at the 28, Jones going to throw long, got Waddle, and he's got it! Touchdown, Alabama! Jalen Waddle again! My goodness. This time, the had Javaris Davis. Remember we said maybe they're picking on number six, Todd? Nope. They're just going to number 17. One-on-one. -on -one. Playing off, beats him, just lob it up to the spot. Waddle beats him by about four yards and makes the play. Boy, this is a historic game by Waddle. Well, we had one of those with Devontae Smith against Ole Miss when he caught 11 balls for 274 yards and five touchdowns. And now it's Jalen Waddle who's putting on a show for us and for the rest of the country. Two-point conversion coming up. All the receivers to the left, except Devontae Smith to the bottom. That's where they're going to throw it. And a flag down before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 74. Five yard penalty, we play the try. Probably kick the extra point now to make it the five point game. You understand why they go for six, but by moving it back, they probably go extra point. One on one. Whistle dead. Smith didn't even go off for the pass. And so Bolivis comes out to try the point after. Try to give Alabama a five point lead. Mac Jones is the holder. Bonus extra point just inside the right upright is good. 1344 <laughs> to go in the Iron Bowl at Jordan Air Stadium, and this is something to watch. Another Jalen Waddle touchdown. 45 to 40. Crimson Tide. That's time for our Exxon Mobile game recap of the 84th Iron Bowl here at Jordan Hare Stadium on Senior Day. Derek Brown is a little boy out there. And boy, what a game it has been. Smoke Monday with an interception of an errant pass, 29 yards for an Auburn touchdown. One of two pick sixes today. But Jalen Waddle, keep that name in your mind a little bit because he weaves his way 98 yards on a kickoff return for a touchdown. Waddle, baby Waddle for sure. Mac Jones trying to get one to Najee Harris, picked off by Zacoby McLean. And Zacoby takes it about as far. He hasn't run that far in practice. <laughs> coast to coast, 100 yards a second pick six for Auburn today. And we're just getting started. Mac Jones, the throw complete to, you guessed it, Jalen Waddle on his way. Nobody can catch him on the far sideline because of that blazing speed. And then Mac Jones, another touchdown pass off his back foot. Waddle with a jump ball in the end zone. And I guess that's where we are right now, right? 45 to 40. I'll tell you right now, if you're an Alabama player, 
getting through this game, no matter how it ends, they've made a big statement here. This many points against this Auburn defense. Yeah. Uh, we called it a Ferrari offense. Mac Jones is driving the Ferrari. <laughs> Here's the high short kick taken at the 21 by Sean Shivers. And nice job on the special teams to get down there and make the tackle with Jalen Moody. So catch your breath. Auburn back on offense. Open field tackle, left arm, and spins around for the tackle. What a play. Moody is inside the linebacker and special teams player, and his left knee came down. Quarterback numbers today. They're not going to forget Mac Jones very soon well, after are. what he's done today. He and now it's Bo Nix's turn. Whitlow comes to Joan Boyd. Joan uh, Boyd in the backfield, but Nix keeps it himself. And Bo Nix, nice run. 15 yards or so in the first down. Auburn. Number 47, John Samuel Shanker comes around the corner. They've been doing it every time. Every time he hands off, the back end of the handoff up the middle is this play. It's his option to keep it when he wants to. He did get 15. As we said, they scored 48 in the second quarter. No reason they can't do 48 in this quarter. Let's see. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. Whitlow. Jennings trying to rip the ball out of there as he got out around the 41-yard line. Alay KO also in on the stop from his linebacker position. Two minutes into the fourth quarter, and Alabama, number five team in the country by five. Trying to win their 11th game and stay in the college football playoff picture. Auburn trying to go to nine and three. Their only losses to all top 10 teams this year. Knicks, trouble coming, got away from it. Little flip to Shivers, who's got it. Down the sideline, wait a minute. There's a flag down. Yeah, I think they're gonna get, is it roughing the passer after the, after the throw? Got hit to the head, as Nix is saying. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 35. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced, men will run, and the close an automatic first down. The freshman linebacker with the call. Oh man, he's running outside the pocket. He gives him a shove. I don't know. I don't know. That's the one that I just, you know, that's an instinct. It looks that way in slow motion. But when you're out there playing, that's a tough call. He got shoved. Well, that puts him in Alabama territory. I mean, just think about this. Just a play earlier, he gained 15 yards on a similar type you know, roll out to that left side. And now it's a wildcat for Whitlow. And only got a couple. Jennings and Phil Mathis holding on to Whitlow. The ball was incomplete on the previous play. I was wondering about the play itself. There was, oh, he bobbled it, and he was out of bounds when he finally found the handle. That's why that was a penalty, and the play didn't continue. Good job by our guys to spot that because I didn't. So that well, we were the players are right on that line right there for us on the near sideline. Second and eight. So the penalty gives him the first down. Whitlow, little hesitation and powers his way to the 38-yard line. Raekwon Davis gets up off one knee after making the initial contact. And important to give that Auburn defense some snaps on the sideline. Auburn being able to run the ball just a little bit, got the quarterback involved, stay in the game, methodically make a few first downs. Big third down play here. They're three for 10 in the game. This one's manageable, third and five. And then go with the sugar huddle, about two yards from the line of scrimmage, which is the 38 of Alabama. And it's Knicks under center. They fake the end around. Knicks might just run with it. No, he's going to throw it. He's got his man. And it's Seth Williams for the first down. Well, how about that patience? Because a young player, you would think in that third and five, his instincts would say, I'm just going to run this. But he patiently waited for his second guy to come across and make the easy throw. So Williams with a catch on the crossing route and a first down. You know, in the three losses, Auburn was 12 for 50, 24% on third down. In this game, they're four for 10. So that's the down that they need to make to keep these drives going. Whitlow, one yard, and that's about it. That was a tough one. 
Anthony Jennings in on another tackle. Ten and a half minutes to go. Whitlow over 100 yards now, along with Najee Harris being at 129. Hasn't been a lot of easy yards. Whitlow's longest run was 17. Second and nine at the 28. Nix, he's going to take off with a quarterback draw. Bo Nix, first down and then some. <laughs> he was so fast. He ran right by his center, Nick Brahms, at time number 52. Watch, quarterback draw. Brahms knows it's all the way, and Nix goes right by him. <laughs> he says, Nick, I'll see you later. Exactly. I can't wait on you, man. <laughs> so another good run by the freshman quarterback of 12 yards. 44 on the ground, 171 and, and, in the year. Remember again, last year in the last year's game, the long rush of the game was nine yards by Auburn. They've already got a 36 yarder, a 16 yarder, and a 15 yarder. Here's a throw low to Stove, and he stood up by Jennings and buried right where he caught it. Check in with Jamie. You still haven't seen Christian Harrison at the linebacker position for Alabama. He's available with a lower body injury, but he's on the sideline. Also, Devontae Smith seems to be okay. He has rejoined the offensive group. All right, Jamie, thanks. KO's in there right now for Christian Harris. And as they made a couple of good plays, there's Devontae on the sideline. Right now, it's the Alabama defense that's on the spot because Auburn's driving. And Seth Williams back in the game. They're their best one-on-one 50-50 -on -one player is in the slot right here. Four receiver group, two each way. But it's the ground game with Whitlow again, and Whitlow's to the 10. Booby Whitlow, nickname is Booby. Jatarvius, I should throw that in there for his mom. Once in a while. Yeah, once in a while. Now you're at that decision time. Five-point game. If you don't pick up the first down, do you put the field goal on the board with a field goal to win it maybe later? It's going to be Whitlow, I think, in the Wildcat here on third and five. And here's Big Canelo again. Raquan Davis just got off the field, and it is Whitlow. And they're going to give it off to Shivers. Shivers slipped a little. Oh, oh and Shivers is in. Took somebody's helmet with him. Oh. Touchdown, Otter. There's a Gus on call play. Absolutely. Shivers on the jet sweep, and he hit the retro jets on that one, didn't he? McKinney comes up, one of the best tacklers we have in this conference, and the smallest Shivers puts the jets on. Whitlow, Wildcat, boom. There it is. And the touchdown to cap it from Pylon Cam. We have seen it all, and we've still got eight minutes to go. What a call. Gus stole one there, and they're going to go for two. Shivers got to put his helmet back on. Xavier McKinney still maybe looking for his. Stove in motion across the field on a two point attempt. Bonix throws. Got his man. It's in for two. And it's Shedrick Jackson. Is going to roll wide. Get outside. Threat of the run is there, and Jackson gets one yard deep in the end zone. Kind of plays basketball. Just stay on that line, wall off the defender, and gets the pass. 8.08 to go. 77 yard drive and 10 plays. Shivers with the capper and a two point conversion. And it's Auburn back in front by a field goal. Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Verizon. State Farm. Sonic. And by Mercedes-Benz. Back and forth we go. Auburn by three. Carlson the high short kick again. Fielded at 
the 20 by Trayvon Diggs flag down as Diggs goes out to around the 33 yard line. And again, a penalty marker back near where the kick was. Offside, kicking team number 55. Five yard penalty went forth, end of the run, first down. Let's take a look at the GMC game well, changer. We know who it is. Yeah. Number 17 has changed the game. First with a kickoff return, and then these short passes, and he's able to get that electric speed. This time one-on-one -on -one to the corner. Perfect throw. And then an all-out blitz by Auburn. Mac Jones reads it, just lay it up, and then Jalen uses his 40-inch vertical to go up and get it at the highest possible point. Part of a four-touchdown day. And penalty markers down again. We're going to have a false start on Alabama. You know, we... False start, offense number 65. Five-yard penalty. So many different angles to look at this game. The big picture of... Alabama winning the game and also looking good enough to make an impression to get into the final four Should you know that the LSU beat Georgia? You know as good as their offense may have looked this defense that has been questioned has given up 34 points right. 45 plus 14, you know, I mean they've been 49 minus that thing you get 48 points minus the two pick sixes Here's a crossing route to Henry Ruggs and Ruggs is to the 40 so every time you say one thing's going their favor, then the other side of the coin is, oh yeah, but is the defense elite enough? I wouldn't want to make these decisions. 28-yard pickup on that last pass play, and now Matt Jones is up to 336 and four scoring tosses today. Najee Harris, little hesitation, puts the head down and powers for eight or nine. As we're down to seven and a half minutes. That time you get the ball and you know what happens in the secondary your receiver goes and gets a block and helps you out that time I think it was Devontae Smith number six it was downfield helping the running back to be able to get those extra yards second and short Brian Robinson slips and he's leveled in the backfield by Derrick Brown third down coming up well, the big guy's got in there a few times, but the ball's been going. Oh, this time he just schools. Deontay Brown, number 65. Did you see that quickness? Strong as an ox, and he beats Brown off the line of scrimmage. Brown just falls down. Deontay Brown, number 65. We asked Marlon Davidson, Derek Brown yesterday, how much does the crowd help you out in situations like this? And Big Marlin said, we urge him on. We need the help. Third it's down and four. Especially if you're a little gassed here. No, another penalty. Now it's going to be third and nine. Yep. And rules. so the crowd did help. Ball start. Offense number 74. Wills was upset with the center, Lynn Dickerson, this time. He feels when his hit, I don't know why he was, but he thought the ball was going to go. Watch it go right to Dickerson, number 69, and say, you can't do that to me. I don't know what he did. Again, the two big fellas up front urging the crowd on. It worked last time. Third down and nine. Jones waits, scrambles around. He'll be dropped. Derek Brown and Nick Cole. Now do you go for it if you're Nick Saban? The, the Alabama players want to go for it. Let's see what he decides. Too far for a field goal. Is it too close for a punt? It's fourth down. Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, Nick Saban, the head coach. The kicker that would have the range for this has been hurt for most of the season. Well, it take an awful lot of time to get situated here. Play clock down to five. Got to hustle if you're Matt Jones. One second. He called timeout, Dick. Nick Saban called timeout. Timeout with 522 remaining. In regulation. Auburn by three.
Five minutes, 22 seconds remaining in regulation of the 84th Iron Bowl. Fourth down and seven coming up, and we don't give you an opportunity to see what Gary and I sometimes talk about during timeouts. We just looked at each other about 20 seconds ago and started laughing. We go, there's a lot going on A lot here. going on. <laughs> and which stars are going to make the play? Is it going to be Deontay Smith? Is it going to be Derek Brown? Is it going to be Marlon Davidson? That guy's made a million of them today. Jay Jay Waddle. Waddle. Pick, a, pick a star. Which star is going to come through? Mac Jones in for the star of stars. Tua Tagovailoa has been a star today. Does he have one more play in it? Fourth and seven. Jones in trouble. Going to try to run for it. He does have another play in him. Matt Jones all the way down to the 18-yard line with a first down scramble. He cannot go by the quarterback in a pass rush. It's the biggest mistake you can make. Put pressure, but don't go by. He saw Derek Brown get in there. Ran right by him, and he had that lane. You don't need to be 4-4 speed. You just need to be 4-8, 4-9, and 2 into it right then. Once he broke the line of scrimmage, first down. A pickup of 18. Matt Jones, who came in with a net four yards rushing on the season, rips off an 18-yarder, and he's got Alabama back in the red zone at the Auburn 19-yard line. Najee Harris. Harris blasts his way down to the 15. Clock winds down. It'll be under four and a half to go in the football game in the fourth quarter, I should say. They put it down right at the 15. Two tight ends in for Alabama. A pistol set with Najee Harris behind Matt Jones. They toss it to him, looking for a block. Najee Harris might have the first down. Nope, they're going to spot him right at the 10. That's about two feet shy. Ness called it two tight ends, but actually it was three offensive tackles. 85 is an offensive lineman, Kendall Randolph. He pins the end man of the line of scrimmage to clear it. Jones, quarterback sneak. Looks like he's got it. He lines up as a tight end, but he's really an extra tackle in the game. Yeah, he's got two jerseys. He's got a 60 when he's not <laughs> exactly. wearing 85. And they're taking clock off the board, making first downs, seven play drive. Billingsley comes back in as a tight end, number 19. Seven runs and just one pass so far on the Alabama drive. We're under three and a half to go. Just inside the Auburn nine-yard line. Najee Harris, nowhere to hide there. Derrick oh, Brown says, uh-uh. He just made a tackle that? with one arm. Did you see him pull that back? He was being blocked. He spun. Najee Harris was past him by a bit, and he just hammered him down from behind. Watch this one-arm tackle. Taking on big block inside, tosses him off and grabs him and throws him. Now, he had a little help. I'll admit that, but what an inside play. He is up for about 10 awards this year for community service. His play on the defensive line and everything else just made another big play there. Second and goal. Najee Harris in motion out of the backfield. Uh -oh, Jones. Uh-oh, another penalty. This Ball time start. it's Leatherwood, number 70. Pardon snap. False start, offense number 70. Five-yard penalty. You remember what uh, Nick told Jamie in the pregame interview? He said the crowd aren't going to make any tackles or any runs, so we just have to manage the noise. And right now the noise has gotten to him a couple of times, and that's their 12th penalty. So the second and goal is getting longer and longer. Out at the 15. Again, Harris will flush out of the backfield. Jones waits, waits. He's going to take off again, and Nick Cole oh, he puts him down. It out. Was his knee down? Umpire says his knee was down. Football came out of his right hand right at the end of the play, but he's down at the 10. There's both yep. knees down knee as down. he tries yep. to stretch it out. Big Cat Bryant was on the tackle. Ball comes loose. Good call. Third down a goal. 
Just over two minutes to go in regulation. And Auburn's going to take a timeout. Smart timeout by Auburn. Everybody can take a big deep breath, including us. We'll be back to a third and goal for the tie. Take a look at the Dr. Pepper SEC conference standings for the first time in eight years. It won't be Alabama or Auburn representing the West in Atlanta next week. It'll be LSU and Georgia, 4 o'clock Eastern time next week right here on CBS. Right now, these two teams are not thinking about that. They're thinking about the 84th Iron Bowl, 48-45, third and goal Alabama with 214 remaining in regulation. And what is defensive coordinator Kevin still thinking about? He's blitzed, and all his, Mac Jones has done is back up and route the ball to the corners. He's not been able to get to him to the blitz. I don't think I'd blitz. I'd try coverage the best I could. Here comes the crowd. Devontae Smith is matched up with Monogany. And Ruggs and Waddle are to the right. There's number 17. He's got Javaris Davis, the veteran on him. Further goal. Jones bobbled the snap a little bit. Throws as it knocked down by Derek Brown. It comes back to Jones. Completes it to himself, but lost a yard. And Kevin Steele did go coverage. He played zone on the play. He backed off. Derek Brown couldn't get there, but he was in the line of fire, and he knocked it down. What a Evan, monster on the inside. He is. Evan Neal did a good job of keeping Brown out, but the path of the throw and the monster knocks it back. So a field goal attempt coming up to try to tie the game with just over two minutes remaining. Joseph Bulibus, a 43-yarder earlier. Nick Saban's gonna have a final word with his kicker. So Auburn down at one timeout, Alabama's got two. Last year in this game, Bullivis was 7 for 7 in extra points, and he hit a 30-yard field goal as well. Today, as we mentioned, he's been good from 43. Of all the places for it to come down to a kick, this is the place. This will be a 30-yard attempt, much like a year ago, but that was in an easy, breezy win for Alabama. This is at Jordan-Hare with a crowd going wild bullibus for the tie kick is on the way and it hit the right the upright it's no good he hit the left upright Places and the team. It looked like it was down the middle and then it hooked. And then it hit dead on. Alabama has two timeouts. Auburn needs one timeout to ice the game. Alabama went 52 yards in 12 plays, and that's the look of a kicker who had been perfect the last two years until right there. Two timeouts, one first down by Auburn, and it is over. Whitlow. Just holding out of the ball with two hands. Got two or three yards. Auburn is only, uh, rather, uh, Alabama taking another timeout. And they've only got one left. Again, everything about the mechanics looked okay. It just happens sometimes. It happens at this level. It happens in the NFL more regularly now than it ever has. Brad, if Alabama can get the stop, three and out, they will get the ball back with about one minute to go in the game. And if they get the stop, remember, they've got Jalen Waddle on the receiving end of what would be a punt. Yeah, That's a lot of if right yeah, now. Definitely not over. I don't think 
Gus would risk a pass here, but I do think he would think about running the quarterback in this situation. Right now, it's Whitlow in the Wildcat, and Nix goes out to the top of the screen, so it's going to be in the hands of Whitlow this time. Fakes it to Shivers, hesitates, goes into the middle of the pile for maybe a yard. It's stopped by that Alabama defense. And it's third down. And the last time out taken right there. Don't go anywhere. 148 left. Back in 30 seconds. A third down and seven coming up. Alabama is out of timeouts. If you complete a pass here, if you have enough guts to pass, and you complete it, and it's good for a first down, it's ball game. Now, if I, you don't do that, it's going to be fourth down. It is, but if I'm Alabama, I'm telling my defense, look for the quarterback keep on this play. I just don't think they're going to throw. Get Nicks out of the pocket, maybe, on a run pass. Well, they're going to put Whitlow back in in yeah. the Wildcat. He only got about a yard last time. Pretty sure Whitlow isn't going to throw. Unless he gives it to Shivers, he fakes it. Whitlow was thinking about throwing, but now he slips down. Wow. It's fourth down. Now the clock will wind. Comes out, good coverage, Alabama defense. Nowhere to go, Whitlow strings it out. And here number comes number 17. He comes on the field. Remember, leading punt returner in the nation versus the worst punt return. It's fourth down and four. They're in a regular formation here with Knicks. Just going to try to draw them off sides, I guess. And they're saying that Alabama jumped. Did they touch him? If they did, they touched it's a him. first down. Yep. They got it. I think they had 12 men on the field. That's why they didn't jump off sides, but they lined up, and Alabama had 12 men out there. Little substitution. Defense, 12 players in the formation. Forcing the five-yard penalty. How about that? How about a way to end the game? I don't know if I've ever seen a game ended with too many men on the field. There you see the changing of the guard remember there's one player deep to return the punt and there's 11 players in the picture that's 12. Bo Nix is saying count them count them how about this finish Nix takes a knee a disgusted Nick Saban whose team is now out of the college football playoff picture with their second loss and 25 seniors who came out here and said, we want to win this game to show that we can do it two out of the last three years and carry it on to the next wave of Auburn Tigers. And they're going to win it on the craziest of possible ways. 13 penalties for Alabama, and the last one finished the game. And they still haven't beat a ranked Auburn team here. This field is magic. He this, said, this one was weird. He said this was not a field of dreams for Alabama ever coming in here since 30 years ago. They honored that 89 team here today, and 30 years later, they've got another big one over their arch rival from Tuscaloosa. In one of the wildest of all Iron Bowls, Auburn wins it 48 to 45. Jamie's with the winning coach. Coach, how do you describe the last 60 minutes of football that we just saw? Yeah, I mean, we played uh, a great game. We, we faced that thirsty. We, we said if we get the fourth quarter, that, that they'll do that, and we'll win the game. We got the fourth quarter. Proud of our team. We got a good football team. What made you so confident in your group that if you got into the fourth quarter, you would get the job done? Because of history. 2013-17. It's repeated itself in the fourth quarter. We found a way to win. They made mistakes. What did Bo Nix show you today as a He's a winner. He's going to win a championship before he gets out of here. He, he, and the rest of our team, defense, two great touchdowns, found a way to win. It's a great team effort. 
How about the way the seniors played on this night? Yeah, I'm proud of them. I mean, we got great seniors. They played great. And now we got a chance to get 10 wins. We've had a great, tough schedule, the toughest in the country. It's a big win for us. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. The three losses coming in were to number two, number four, and number 10. And the one they really wanted was to beat number five, and they have. Back down to Jamie with a winning quarterback. Bo, you've got Auburn football in your blood, but this was your first Iron Bowl. How did it feel? Uh, it's like everything I ever dreamed. Uh, I mean, the, the fans were crazy the entire game. Uh, the offense was clicking, the defense was clicking. This is a dream come true. The offense was clicking, but it seemed like a roller coaster out there at times. What was it like to play in? It was a roller coaster like to play in it. And we just weathered the storm, the highs and the lows. Our defense played great when it had to. They got a stop on fourth down. And then that miscommunication at the end of the game gave us a first down. And uh, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger. Speaking of that defense, Derek Brown is standing behind you. What does a senior like that mean to your career? Well, Derek, I mean, he's like unlike anybody else. Um, he knows he's going to go in the top 10 in the draft, and he's played every single game, and he's played lights out, and uh, he's got all my respect. Congratulations, Bo. Thank you. War Eagle. Derek! How does that one feel? Man, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. We worked, out, we worked hard, so hard for this moment, and God bless us with a winning night. This was a challenge, but how did you guys overcome it at the end? We knew it was going to be a four-quarter fight. We knew if we just gave it all to all, we were going to be able to come out with a victory. And that's exactly what happened. happen. Congratulations, Derek. Thank you. Derek Brown's last series, just like the previous three and a half years. Exactly. <laughs> so for Auburn to win for the fourth time this decade against Alabama, number five, the All-American, we said it at the open, the stars had to be stars. And down the end, he was the star. He made the plays. That last series was incredible. Four wins in this decade against Alabama. And Gus Miles has now tied Les Miles for three wins, three wins against Nick Saban. And it's time for the play of the game, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And I always hate when it comes down to this. Joseph Bullivus, who had been perfect all day, Hits the left upright, and off it comes. Eli Gold called it like this. Uh, Eddie Bertram, beg your pardon. Snap is down, the kick is on the way, and the kick. He missed it! He missed it! It hit the upright! It hit the upright! And with two minutes to go, Auburn will get the ball back, leading by three! Wow! Can you believe it? Great call by Andy Burcham, the first year voice of the Tigers. And don't you know, his predecessor, Rod Bramlett, might have had something to do with that kick. What a game. Well, on a day when Nova retired as the War Eagle and Oria took over to be War Eagle 8, the War Eagles and the Tigers scored 48 on Alabama, and they win it 48 to 45. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl, Brad Nessler saying so long from the Plains. The 84th Iron Bowl was a classic. Rocket Mortgage and the College Football Postgame Show is coming up next. So long from Auburn.